All right, looks like we are live and welcome to Sunday Night at the Fights. Yeah, Sunday Night Fights, all right. Uh, we've got some uh, classical time control games here going from uh, these round robin groups that we just started. And uh, the games have started, but I, I hope they're still in the opening because otherwise they would be <laughs> playing way, way too fast. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, I was doing some training with these most of these guys today, and I think a problem that I know I would have if I was doing this online thing is just being online would make me go fast. You know, yeah. I would just be naturally disposed to go fast, and so I think a lot of people are just doing it that way. And um, so, right, it's you know, you're not using fully your time, but. On the other hand, a lot of these players, what I've noticed, these are all kind of around 2,200 or so, and they do all have ideas in the open. They might not have like it all, it all totally mapped out, but they definitely all have ideas. Um, yeah, it's like they they definitely know what they kind of want or are looking for in the opening a lot of the time. Right. Let's. How about we start with Bubba Tusk or M. Fabian's game? Wait, excuse me. What am I saying? No, let's start with, um, this is really weird. Let's start with, it, with, uh, Bubba's game against Quirked. And, um. Sure, should, actually yeah. one sec, let me, um, I need to put it up on our live board. Mm. Um, actually, Jesse, would you mind sending me the link in Discord, just so I could. The link to uh, the game. The game, yeah. Actually, both games, if you could. I'll send you both games, right. And if anyone's watching out there, I sent a message out on the Discord server that I think these are our two games today, but maybe I'm missing somebody. So if I'm missing some other game that's happening, maybe on Lee Chess or whatever, let me know. Well, I just sent it to the wrong person. I better fix that. Oops. Right, so I just sent you. Thanks. Right. Well, so anyways, while he's, while Costa's doing that, uh, I'm going to give a plug now. I'm going to go back on the analysis board and, you know, I'll give a plug to my D4, F5, Bishop, G5 thing. <laughs> that I did the video on that. But one of the curious things about what Bubba is doing here is playing D4, E6, and only after C4 playing F5. This is, I've known a couple of GMs that have played this way. And of course you have to be a French player to do this. Um, and you know, in our training session last week, we had Bubba Tuff playing black against weak chess. And Bubba Tuff played a very interesting variation of the win word that I might do uh, just a couple positions on um, what is the story of this position in that series. If I ever get around to it. <laughs> but anyways, he has some big ideas in the French of how to play. And then clearly he likes this kind of combative business. Um, I feel like there's a lot of questions here after night H3. Wait, Jesse, by the way, it seems like your camera might be frozen. I'm actually, it's frozen oh, yeah, on my it's, end. Yeah, it's, it's my terrible camera, everybody. My terrible camera. Um, yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah, I'm still frozen. I oh, you see it, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, I think I'm just back on my... Back, oh, God, it's just frozen, frozen, frozen. Okay, so I'm back on terrible camera. I have no idea what's wrong with your <laughs> camera. I think, it looks, I think it looks it's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier in the day when there was more light in the room, it was over. Oh, right, right, right. Um, thanks, Phenom Monkey, by the way, for the sub. And also, guys, I want to double check on the audio that you can hear both of us at around the same volume. I think last time I was I was way too loud. So if that's the case again, let me know so that I can 
I also have some music playing in the background and I have no idea how loud that is compared to how we sound. Hopefully the music is like fairly quiet. <laughs> okay, I'm a bit loud. Maybe I can turn myself down a bit. Can't hear any music. Okay, that's probably for the best. <laughs> uh, no, I have Spotify turned down very low. Okay, so I have the um, the games up. I have Bubba's game up first. And okay. Um. Ah, so we got the stone wall. Right, and I've always been a little bit suspicious of this knight h three thing, but the the idea is very simple, right? That your knight your knight on h three wants to help the bishop exchange on f four, cruise to d three, bring the other knight to f three, and then rotate through e five like a big fat jerk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the overall plan, and arguably, White's getting helped by this bishop d six because that allowed bishop f4. And then check this out. Uh, uh, Bubba was like, no, <laughs> it's going to go back, mm -hmm. which maybe he should have done in the first place uh, because now we're at least claiming that the bishop, the knight on h3, isn't so cool. So I've actually, I've actually played this system for white a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I really like it. I think it's very easy to play because you're... Your plan is always just like get the knights to f3 and d3, control the e5 square, put a rook on c1. You know, we're taking on d5 if we can force c takes d5, like if black goes maybe knight d7, then cd might be a good idea there. Um, this bishop e7 idea is definitely known, so to me it seems like um, although Bubba spent three and a half minutes here, I don't think that's a move you really play so quickly unless you kind of understand that that's a good idea. Because it seems like, yeah, we're just losing a tempo. I don't know. That felt intuitive to me just because the knight on h3. If, if white gets his dream of like rotating through e5 and exchanging the bishops, then either clear or, or small advantage, right? You know? Yeah, I think white is generally slightly better. Um, so I think bishop e7 is definitely like... A very useful try. Now, so the only thing I want to say that I, I think I understand about this position is that back in the day, we people were not playing b6 and bishop b7, and then Carlson had a couple games with b6, bishop b7, and then it, I think it kind of changed the stone wall. Because, it, yeah, it changed it. it. Like the computer, you turned it on, and then it was like, oh, it's actually playable to do b6, bishop b7. When it, and at first it, it didn't feel, at least let's say back in the day, it didn't seem right because you were possibly opening lines on the queen side, but very resilient. And um, yeah, so that would have been, was well, still my question now. Like, I don't know exactly, White needs to make a judgment call now, of course. Um, and he's, we've got actually a couple moves. He played queen c2. But I think b6 at some point is going to be the question mark. And queen c2 makes b6 ideas a little more awkward because if any kind of bishop b7, then you can do cd, ed, and queen takes f5. Bubba doesn't care, though, and plays h6. <laughs> um, yeah. Which... Is very controversial, and we saw a game like this last week where Black started pushing like a madman on the king side, right? And um, yeah, it was very similar actually. We had some wild g5 thing. Right. That was uh, quirked, I think. Right. So uh, quirked is facing his own madness here. Um, quirked. I went over a game with him to today, and it was pretty amazing that I, I realized. You know, we all have chess DNA, and your match with uh, Trent kind of exposed you as exposed is too harsh. <laughs> it showed it showed right that you you've got a pretty conservative positional bent, and yeah. Quirked is like a good example of someone who is exactly the opposite of you. 
this guy just wants to hurt people. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he will go for it. And it's kind of, you know, he's got this positional setup and in a way, like it, it's positional and yada yada, but he, he wants to hurt people here. And so, yeah, interesting game. Yeah, that um, you're talking about that game recovering today, right? In the class, that game was That's fascinating. Right, yeah. I remember actually watching that one live. Um, like a lot of times, because I remember they posted that game when they were playing it, and so sometimes when people post links, I'll just like check out the game for a bit just to see what's what's going on. And then that was one of the only games that where like I looked at it and like, oh wow, I have to keep this open. Like <laughs> I just right, I want right, to see right. like what happens here. So that was that was a fascinating game. Uh, yeah, so Vish was asking, um, how does the knight get to d3? Usually through the uh, four square. So at some point, why would have liked to have traded dark square bishops and then play knight f4. Here, if black hadn't played h6, then white would definitely be playing like knight f3, maybe bishop comes back, knight f4, knight d3, and so on. Now with h6, then it's now knight f3, g5 is of course a potential issue. So white has to be. Um, and we should, more we should add here. that um, Black at some point probably wants to play knight d7, but one of the problems of knight d7 is knight g5, and then e6 gets a little bit embarrassed. Another yeah. problem of knight d7 is that cd move, because you really want to always play ed if you can. Um, so right, there's so two this, problems. And, yeah, also this one is this one is pretty annoying too. So I like h6, it's very consistent. Uh, I want to say it might be consistent, but I, I mean, I, I'm a man of development here, and I'm really starting to believe in the in the white position, especially after a6. But I'm not, you know, exactly what we do is not entirely to me. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking like I'm pretty sure I have this in my file, or like if I don't, I really should because this is, I mean, this is still like a tabia or like a theoretical position, like the queen. Queen definitely is well placed on C2 and everything. Um, trying to figure out I mean, what White it's does just, here. Exactly, like White can do many different things. And let's put it maybe the simplest terms is that if White can uh, make the knight on H3 in some way useful, then he's going to be clearly better. Um, but Black is, you know, all of the play, even though I think that is going to try to, excuse me, Bubba is going to try to make it into a kingside attack, which is going to be debatable, right? But all of Black's play at the moment is designed to make Knight H3 a little bit embarrassed. Um, yeah, there's a couple of good plans here. So F3, Knight F2, this is definitely on the table. Um, and it's especially something I think White should go for if Black goes for some, some G5, because then you're playing E4, you're just opening the center. Um, there's also this idea bishop takes b8, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes b8 is the boring man's <laughs> and It just really clarifies the position, after which, uh, you know, I'm going to say white's a little bit better. It's it's not the, like, knock-you-out maneuver, right? F3 is definitely far more dangerous, but potentially... But, but dangerous for both sides, more volatile, much more volatile position. Um, yeah. I think Kostya would play bishop takes b8. I don't think Quirk will, though, because he's he's a madman. F3 Actually, on the board. No, yeah, I, I would play it. f3 here. This would be my move. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Uh, well, you know, one thing, I think I told this story at some other point. I had, I you know, I played against the Dutch way back in the day, and I had a couple games where... Because I didn't understand that pawns aren't actually people, I would always be focusing my play on pawn breaks. And F3 was one of the standard mistakes that I definitely would make against the Dutch. It's not always a bad move. But for example, right now, I don't necessarily think that White wants to play E4. He could think about it for sure, but um, more importantly, I think White wants Knight F2, D3 or some rehabilitation of the knight, and then you just claim that the f3 is dominating the knight on f6 as well. That's true, Jesse. I think you did beat Nakamura in the Dutch, is that right? That's right, yeah. And kind of like actually with this thing, 
where black got, let's call it, a Dutch he could live with, with a little bit more, d4, e6, e4, f5. Uh, I played knight f3 on move one, and Naka played f5, which is a little bit harder for white to deal with. Um, and I had my own little weird system that, you know, it was like an equal position out of the over. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be tough. I mean, I assume, well, knight bd7 is the question, but then you got to wonder about cd. Yeah, um, actually, I, I feel like if I'm white here, I, I do want to play e4 as long as I don't have a problem with um, the d4 pawn. So if, if this one is just like hanging after d takes e4, then okay, that might be an issue. But if that's even if we can play like knight f2 first and then play e4, so at least it's not hanging with check. I feel like white, from what I've seen, is usually just like very ready to open the king side and just right, just me, give a pawn and let me play the play. bad move first so just so you get a sense of how you feel about it so g5 i don't know if it's bad but it's pretty loosey-goosey um yeah i would go i think i'll go bishop b5 Oh, in general, the reason we're trashing knight d7 is because um, black needs to be able to meet c takes d5 with e takes d5 in most cases. And then when the knight is on d7, that's not possible because f5 is hanging. So if black is forced to play c takes d5, especially with the knight on d7 where they're not even getting knight c6, then structurally it's just huge, huge problems for black usually. Right, and so here we come to a tactical question of it. So let's say knight d7. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, just e4, let's just try. Let's, let's just show for a second. So the idea would be cd, ed, queen f5, mm, yeah. knight e5, queen e5, and I'm not sure that black has compensation. I don't know. Uh, but it is true that the knight, you know, let's just say bishop d6, maybe we have something better. Well, we have a little bit of something, something. You know, I don't know how much what we can yeah, it's something. <laughs> I don't know if it's full compensation, though. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like... It's, it's you know, actually, it's got, it's got a little juice in it. It does have a little bit of juice. But okay, I, I'm i just seeing it. This is going to be some hard decisions here for Bubba because, like, when you get this position, right? White gets all the choices. You can play E4. You can do CD. Uh, maybe you can even do other things too. F four, you could. I'm sure you could consider F four. Yeah. Yeah. F four definitely could. Because then white is. I mean, not necessarily just playing. Sometimes it feels like when white plays like a double stone wall, then they're just trying to get a very small advantage. But I, I don't think that's necessarily the case here. Like. By the way, on on F four, we have the main concern is some knight G four thing. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Got <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Indy three. Um, I feel yeah, like I'm not too scared, but I don't know if F four would be. Well, it's just to say really... that white is the one. Black has to be scared of so many different things, and um, it's not like there's any variation where black is crushing. So, I don't know what Bubba should do here, honestly, after F3. Yeah, um, yeah I'd like to... Development. I feel like G5, Bishop E3 is also fine, and then just like Bishop F2 and E4. Someone's asking, can we maneuver the knight to... Uh, d3 before and that was an option if we had taken on d6 that was one of the key things that uh, Quirk could have done if you wanted to play slower chess and what we're just seeing with Quirk is the dude is not interested in slower chess <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think we're going to see this guy it wants to hurt and um, it'll be interesting how he handles this position he's definitely played the most let's call him maximalist ideas so far and 
the very least, he's put Bubba in a hard spot where if I was black here, I could imagine just roasting loads of time. Just there's so many ghosts on the board and all kinds of strange things happening. Right. So, shall we check out the uh, the other sure. game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look. Okay, let me make uh, sure I can. I'll see if I can. Three was the last we had. Let's walk through it. Actually, let's go from the start, Kosi, because you're kind of in. I, I appreciate your insights in this Double King on stuff. Um, why don't we start here with H3, Bishop B7, D3, and then this D5. What are your thoughts here? Um, okay, just need... Just need a sec. I was making sure everything on the stream looked good. I think, I feel like I've looked at this line recently. So, okay, white goes h3, so anti martial. Um, basically, if white makes any move other than c3 here, then d5 is kind of not as nice for black. So, h3, bishop b7, d3, d5. Last I remember, it's supposed to be fine for black. I mean, of course, like <laughs> everything is. Um, White goes knight d2, so right, they don't take the pawn. Queen d7, knight f1. Yeah, my instinct here would be that black is uh, totally fine. Like, usually, I think if white is supposed to be getting anything against these, uh, like, delayed martial lines, it's usually through capturing the pawn. Not always, but here it feels like... Like the bishop on b7 is open, black got d5 in, so as long as as long as white isn't getting some immediate uh, kingside initiative, black should be okay. Let me ask a dumb question here too, like, if you were going to go to g3, wouldn't it be just cooler to go knight e4? I feel like knight e4 is the move, yeah. Okay. I don't Maybe. see, um, I think, well knight f1, it's, yeah, kind of stereotypical. So Black kind of decided, oh, I'm going to punish you for that. Put the bishop over here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's some funny businesses here because uh, I've seen these positions. Okay, rook f8. Now, rook f8, maybe not the best move because, it, I mean, it feels natural, but you're leaving f7. And one of the things that I'm worried about for black is after c3, which was played, Black has to figure out what the pieces are doing, right? Like, what's the knight doing on c6? And if that knight can't figure it out, then, um, <laughs> I don't know, then the vision on b7 can't figure it out, and you don't really want to play f6 ever. Right. So I'm sh I, I have full trust that you're right, that it's fundamentally okay for Black. But black has to figure has to... Oh sorry, I lost you there for a sec. Turn on camera. My camera, I apologize. It's been on the glitch all day. Um, so we have some interesting insider info on Mitchell, the guy playing black here. So he studies Jan Gustafsson's course on chessable on E4, E5 that includes the Marshall and all the anti martial lines. And he's uh -huh. always posting updates like on Twitter about like how much he likes that course. And I know he's like a power user and he's actually like one of the top. I don't know if you use chessable much, but the, they have a leaderboard for the players, uh -huh. how much time they spend on each course. And he's like one of the right. top players in that course, period. Like the guy who's spending some of the most time studying uh, the Gustafsson repertoire. Uh, it's fun, okay. So yeah. I'm actually interested, like, you know, at what point does he actually spend time in this game? Because it looks like he he started spending time at this moment after C3. Uh-huh. And also, actually, it's interesting, you know, he had played, so he played, we are looking at this King's Indian game today, and he had actually studied with, the, like, I don't know if it's a book or it's a, a adjustable course, but it's Catronius on the King's Indian. Mm. And um, he had a pretty detailed sense of what was going on. But, you know, like a lot of those positions, I didn't, 
I didn't really feel like he understood it. They were difficult to understand. I mean, you know, those positions where White is trying to get grab space. And one of the hilarious things that I think we talked about last week was he made a comment where Black just needs to create an opening repertoire where uh, trading the bishop on g7 is a bad idea. <laughs> right. And that totally happened in his game. And yeah, it was like, I don't know if he necessarily understood it. But anyways, right, it's very booked up. And uh, those positions are really intense. Um, what do yeah. we know about Shock Mustaya? Shock Mustaya. played a good game last year, last, last year, last week, I feel. Yeah, actually, um, I feel like I've known Shock through Twitch for a while. Um, I think he has generally been on my streams and stuff and, like, always... Um, solving problems i feel like he was participating when i was like doing like the woodpecker method and stuff um so i've known him online i believe he's a college student if i'm not mistaken could be wrong um and yeah i think he just recently joined the uh, the warrior group this might be like his first first or second month but pretty pretty tactical i would say from what i've seen so let's get into this let's go back so c3 Kicking h8 makes a lot of sense. He wants to play f6. And I feel like this is White's... White needs to come up with something nice here. But I think what he does doesn't help. Because f6 wants to be played anyway. And then this knight... I feel like Black could go to f8 if he wanted to as well. The knight on e4 is not... Great, and has to worry about f5s. Wait, so in the game we actually have knight 3e4 on the board. What? <laughs> I just <laughs> assumed that it was the other knight. <laughs> knight 3e4, holy moly. Of course. This is checkmate master, shock Mistero. I don't know if that's what that means, but... <laughs> it's chess master. Um, <laughs> so, wait a second. That's funny that I just automatically the other night. Um, okay. And Fabian moved bishop b6 pretty quick. You'd think in a position like this, this is like, if, if white doesn't mate you, he's kind of in positional grief. So, like, you think you would pay, pay more thoughts about bishop f Is there something wrong with bishop f8? Let me put the right the player. No, positionally, I mean, usually the bishop should go to f8 to defend in this kind of position. Um, just makes sense. I mean, sometimes it's, yeah, concretely not working. Um, and I don't know, I mean, it, it does, even this looks very dangerous for black. Uh, but in the game, we have we have a bomb on the, on the table after bishop e6. <laughs> 16 okay. and a half minutes. Wow, what a thing. Wait, okay. so last yeah. week, so Shock played the game against, I think it was Quirked, right? When we had, ended yeah, up being a Stonewall. Think, yeah, exactly. Right, and we thought he was, he had a little bit of a tunnel vision at certain points, because he wasn't seeing, like, direct, direct wins. Eventually he got there, but I think he was missing a lot simpler stuff along the way. He, he, was, he was obsessed with the G file, remember, and the G5 point. Right. That, right that's right, it's coming back to me. Knight h7, man. Boom. All right, well, let's do some basic variations. So let's assume takes. Let's assume check. Let's assume king g8. And now c4, and there's a c5 problem, bro. I think, I think <laughs> simpler. I think um, maybe even just knight f6, bishop d5, queen g6, and just meet the guy. Oh, holy. Okay, so... One of the great things about this for white is that c4 is a bailout if knight f6 doesn't work. True. c4 looks like, yeah, like plus two. <laughs> like <just> right. <laughs> so, snip, that's force. You could, you, you could do it. I would like check first two. But okay. Oh, king f8 isn't necessarily winning on the pawn. Yeah, it is, right? We're just going to take on f6 of king yeah yeah so and then we're gonna say on king h8 now you can take on f6 but let's just look 
at the basics. Is that just over? Yeah. It looks pretty over. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, one of the things I noted with um, with uh, Mitch was he had a you know that that game that we looked at today. He definitely played a lot of decisions quickly, and this decision where he played Bishop B six, he definitely played it too quick. Oh yeah. And so let's get this knight three e four thing on the board. Total madness and. Let me just so let me try bishop f8. I don't think knight h7 works now. Be, I, maybe I'm wrong, but it, I think that bishop like <laughs> there's a reason we want it there, right? Yeah, bishop will go to f8. No, white has a lot of moves. It might still just be super dangerous anyway. But I mean, this definitely feels like a better shot for black if knight takes h7 is is just crushing. Um, I mean, there's there's queen h5. Okay, let's try queen h5. Then, like, even g6 would be be available. <laughs> Although g6 we can yeah, take twice on h7. King G8 on the board, and uh, now he's got his choice between the plebeian C4 and the wrecking of Knight takes F6. But it looks like Knight F6 isn't that complicated. Wait, let's yeah. let's let's try to be precise about it. So G F6, I think Queen G6 first might be more accurate. So, and let me just say, if that's, I don't know if that's actually, no, I don't think that's even true. <laughs> I think it's the same thing. Honestly, they both look, yeah, totally winning to me. They um, both look totally winning. Uh, check the miserable king, because if king f8, we can say, check, and this, I think, is just, I don't think you're going to live through this, but maybe, wait a second. Let's, let's make it clean, though, after king f8. So that's the question if you do it this way. Could dude play king f8? I kind of doubt it. Maybe just queen f6 and then bring the, bring the guys in. No, queen f7 was the... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, yeah. So that's, that's the issue, and that's why I thought maybe it would be easier just to take first. Wait a second. No, excuse me, no. I mean, to give check, check first. No, now that actually that's a that's a pretty serious point. No, I think now this feels a lot cleaner. Yeah. But okay, still king f8. Uh, and then watch what we can do. We go check the miserable king, and then we take on d7, and at the very least we got that one. Wait, no, we no. gave two. We gave two. We gave knight <laughs> h7, knight f6. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Well, maybe this isn't. Okay, it feels like there should be an answer here, but I haven't delivered yet. <laughs> oh, knight of six on the board. This is going to be forced, and then he's going to have this question. Yeah, gf6. Bishop h6. Jeez. Really? Take it easy, buddy. Um, and so quick, too. So quick. Why? <laughs> why? Why so fast? Yeah, I mean... Well, right, you know, I was telling him in the group, too, it's like, if you're winning, if, if this position is winning, then it's the game over, so you might as well spend 20 minutes to make sure you haven't blown it in some key variation. Yeah. And now black plays knight, f5, knight a5 instantly. Instantly? 
Like, yeah, these guys, these guys need to talk it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like, I was, I was saying um, to them, I was like, you know, it's a real problem for people playing online that you're just kind of. At least I would be naturally inclined to move too quick because um, I'm just trained as playing Blitz online for years to just be a little bit superficial you know just to move and now you've got to be there with all the um, you know all the complications of your twitter feed and this feed and that feed and then it's hard to stay focused very hard i think and these guys are just moving as if it's a blitz game right and it's really mitch who's he's hardly used any time <laughs> Shock Mosteo at least thought for 16 minutes on that one move. Uh, I'm going to promote this 95. Yeah, I feel like if there's one rule of like time management, it's like, don't, you can't get mated with like an hour and a half on your clock. That's like... <laughs> don't get mated, buddy. <laughs> um, okay, now let's just, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he saw all this. What is White's follow up? Rook e4. Rook e4 would be the move. I mean, is there any other candidates? Some kind of check and then rook e4, but I don't quite see that. I mean... You check first, then I'm going to have queen h7 with a tempo. I honestly feel like bishop c2 might be not insane here. Despite the fact that we're down two pieces. But to me, rook e4 would have to be the first move. Right. And bishop c2, you know. Okay. That might be yes. That's <laughs> pretty hokey. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we're down two there's pieces. all kinds of things like knight f4. Knight f4 there. is annoying, yeah. Knight f4 kind of kills it. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's us that, like, Fabian's playing so fast here. Um, you know, one actually th interesting thing, too, is uh, we saw in his game, in Mitch's game, is that he played in several positions. He played quickly with the sense of, like, his opening was cool and his opponent's play was bad and therefore he should be winning. And it was kind of true, but it was way more complicated than he thought. And so even though he had, I definitely yelled at him a little bit. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. a couple hours ago. It's funny, oh, habits die hard, you know. Habits, you, it's not just like somebody tells you to uh, be more careful and then suddenly you're more careful. Right. Yeah, you, I think in chess especially, you have to learn these lessons multiple times and make the same mistakes multiple times. Uh, by the way, hey, Neil Bruce in the chat. Good to see you. All right, let's try Vishnu's suggestion of rook e4. Um, E4. Oh, I think he might have been talking after bishop c2, but let me just see if there's a clean way for Mitch to play after. I mean, this looks pretty good because we're throwing rook g4 and also queen g6 check, king h8, rook h4. This is very painful. Amazingly, Shock Mistea is thinking about it now. Um, there's. Okay. Yeah, well, probably he missed knight a5 and now he's like, uh oh, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, this is what this is what I think I figured out. F five is going to lose to Queen G six, King H eight, Rook H four. So that's kind of out. Yeah, if Knight takes B three, then we go Rook G four check. We insert and this I one. Think, I think that's also out, right? Yeah. Now, because we have Bishop G seven stuff. Um, there might be some miracle save there, but it's really hard to imagine. Um. Okay, Rook E4 on the board. Ah, uh, wow, man. I don't know if he yeah, fully figured it out, but I think he realized this is the only move <laughs> like, does anything. 
Like you said, it's an embarrassment if you lose the game with hardly any time. Um, yeah, this new so. Oh, go ahead. If knight takes b3, white will go rook g4 check. Gotta go queen takes g4. And we're taking with check. King has to go to f7. It is a lot of pieces, yeah. I was thinking this might not be totally dumb, but there's this queen d7 check, which is going to be annoying. For example, if you go, you're, you, the idea would be to play rook g8, for example, a, b. But then on rook g8, I just play that, and it's, I feel like that's the end of the party. Yeah, king definitely feels weak here. I definitely wouldn't say it's like, oh, super winning, but I think, I think we're taking white. That looks like super winning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You need something special if Queen D7 is falling, right? Okay, yeah. let's go back. Wow, NM Yang says he beat Karyakin in the uh, Seattle Online Blitz Tournament, I think. Like 3 plus uh -huh. 2 or something. Nice. Cool. That was the guy I was playing like a ton of bullet games with before the match, trying to like prep. <laughs> he, was, he was beating me in a lot of games, so I feel better now that he beat Karyakin. So we're not seeing anything after rookie four, right? I guess there's rookie seven, which is on the board. I guess I guess Holy Mitchell God, is. <laughs> these guys play really fast. Well, wait a sec though. After rook g four, what's your plan? I don't know. I mean, I think right. Black must have had other options. Let's presume for a moment that his plan is king h eight. It looks terrible. In fact, it looks just it's just over. We're gonna go here. And here, yeah. And I guess what, King F8? No, man. <laughs> it looks like mate to me somehow. No, there's no way. Yeah, Queen H6, Rook G7. Bishop G7 is also a cruel, cruel move. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that looks. So yeah, both Mitch playing so fast. Um, it's you know it's actually Mitch is an interesting person to me with the opening study because. Well, let me ask you, are you doing a lot of chessable stuff? Um, occasionally. Uh, these guys are, wow, just still making moves. Um, I have the Gustafsson repertoire, which I'm like slowly, slowly working through. Uh, I was mainly doing the 100 Endgames You Must Know book on chessable. Because I feel like the Endgame study is really where it's at. Mainly just because you, I feel like you just need to practice like all those theoretical positions like a bunch of times before you'll you'll actually remember them, uh, in a in like a time scrambler or something. But yeah, those are those are my main things. Other than that, I'm not doing a whole lot. Well, we've got the okay. Queen has come off, so rook g4, queen takes g4. This is the plan, I guess. Bishop takes d5. Um, interesting that white took this one super fast also. Bishop Why? takes d5, queen g4, and king f7. Alright, there's obviously many things I don't understand. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> like what? but okay, I guess he's just saying intuitively that even though the bishop's strong and stuff, that... The knight on a5 is left out to draw. Yeah, I guess it still, so. It still should be winning. I'm just amazed they're moving so fast, but. Um, yeah. So, okay, so it's kind of mellowed out. It looks. I mean, white has the material and the compensation. Is that fair? I feel like material. I mean, it's rook and two, so. I feel like material-wise, black is not doing so badly here with the, the three pieces, but... The king safety is definitely a problem. Although, honestly, I, I don't think this is going to be that easy for white to play here. Huh. I mean, for instance, like, rook g8 is a threat. Mm -hmm. I 
think white can we can we just go back actually because i feel like <laughs> oh, yeah, Tommy, yeah. there were so many things that both players could do yeah it's oh, such a shame like so we fast. i feel like there must have been something clear here for white like i mean bitch may six might be a double x slam i i mean i don't know he played it so fast um and definitely knight eight well, he didn't see knight a5 coming, but I guess knight a5 was not, at least it didn't do it. You know, the answer. Hmm. Wait, what about before this? Could black have taken... Um, no, black never had time to take this knight on g5, because it was knight e4 hitting this one, and then this one. Uh, bishop e6, and then white just took immediately here. Um... I mean, now actually, I'm kind of feeling your move C4 is just. This doesn't. This just wins back the piece, and then you have a great position. Well, right. So, you know, like, that was the default. I guess his move was even better. But Black clearly. The Bishop B6 was very incautious. Yeah. You know, that's a move of a guy who's saying, I'm gonna, I, I want that Archangel Bishop, and I'm just going to, like, murder you on F2 or something. And no, man, you gotta get you gotta get back. <laughs> you gotta get back because it missed both this and it missed c4, c5. So two ideas. White has. Yeah, yeah. I, I get the feeling Mitch is just like maybe a little bit too focused on the openings because he's spending all this time studying the opening, but then he's like throwing the game because he's just not spending any time. Well, and also if he's just not spending any time, you know, he just needs to, he needs to learn to slow down. Yeah, even if the position wasn't super sharp, right, there would still be something to consider. Absolutely. So, how about this? Let's, I'm just going to say this is toast. I might be wrong, but in, in, how should I say it? I'm not going to be wrong in the sense that, yeah, it's just over. Because the knight is out. If your knight were, like, crushing me somehow... If you had some more pawns, I'd give you some hope. But like, let's say queen h5, king e6, let's say bishop e3, and I don't care if you want to play rook g8, I'll play g4. Oh man, oh man, I might have queen f5s of the world. And... Hmm. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. No, I always. Well, no, I, I would agree with you. I, I think white is. I guess I don't. I feel like the technique here would be hard. Uh, for for the players, but I mean, it's it sucks. You're, you're not only down material, but that knight's gone. It needs a lot of work to come back. And whose king is better? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna play queen f5. It's gonna be a thing. The only hope for black is that that unopposed bishop on d5 is gonna be some kind of animal. Yeah. Which could happen, but. Okay, clearly it's good for white, and we have <laughs> we have some moves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, that happened. Oh, but white didn't play bishop e3. I played rook e1. Probably not terrible. And uh, let's put that on the oh, board. Oh, didn't so. give a check, so rook e1. Rook g8. G1. Check. G8. King e6. Check Direct, you know, so right. My move of um, Bishop B3 was just to try to tame it a little bit down, and this is more again more ambitious. He's always going for the more ambitious move, and this seems this seems totally winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately for Black, they can't play Rook H7 because of Queen F5 check at any point, and if they go. Had they gone rook h8 last move, then queen f5 at least gets out of the pin right away. But now with king on d7, now queen f5, bishop e6, okay, can take on f6. So yeah, rook h8 is not really, not really a threat yet. Yeah, I think bishop e3, d4 also makes sense. Yeah, d4 is a nice move, yeah. I like that. I, this, I don't really have any complaints the way it's done. A C4 might even be a move, you know. Yeah. The D4 does allow uh, Knight C4. Okay. Let's go back to the other game. We got some spicy stuff happened after F3. Right. Bubba Tuff made a big think about it. 
And uh, yeah, now this seems like a nice pace of play. We we only had like a couple moves. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like three moves, right? Like this is like both players spending their time. I I don't know if this C five move is correct, but it's pretty interesting. And it was a definitely a position where Black needed to come up with something. I I'm I'm feeling C five. I mean, I haven't done any calculation yet, but. That's the kind of thing he should be looking for. And one of the things I was talking about earlier with the B6 move is a lot of times in those systems, B6, C5 was played, and uh, it turned out to be really dynamic. And here we're just going to play C5. We're going to say knight down H3 is bad. Oh, I, I think this is pretty... And I like that Bubba thought forever about it. Now, why play bishop E3... My guess is that there's going to be no advantage after Bishop, but I'm not necessarily saying I have a better. Bishop e3 better. doesn't feel right. Yeah, so f3 c5. This is definitely thematic. I feel like you see this in the Nimzo a lot. Whenever White plays f3 in certain positions, trying to push e4, it's exactly the moment you play c5, even if it means losing a tempo because you just start exploiting this like dark square weakness that White just made. Um. Yeah, somehow I, I feel like I... I don't know, okay, my, my first instinct here would be just E3. So a lot of times in the Dutch, I found that we're... We're just okay with all these center pawns trading, because it just leaves black with, like, E6, F5, just super weak in an open position. Um, But, I don't know, I mean... Feels like there should be other options here. We got a question here that might be good to answer uh, from R. A. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Ray Felix sixty two, and he's asking, "How can he join these tournaments, and um, how do we get the games analyzed?" And so Kosi is more the expert, so I'll just give my uh, I'll give my you know Rube's analysis of what we're doing here. What we're <laughs> so we got Kosi was really the the brains behind the Discord server and the idea behind training. So if at the moment, we might, this might evolve, and maybe we should even talk about it tonight, but we've been having these cool training sessions where I've been doing the 1800 plus for the last couple of weeks, and Kosi has been doing the other one. And especially the 1800 plus guys are doing uh, uh, these tournaments, and but also the other guys too. And actually, maybe we should be, I, I have a feeling maybe some other games are being played in the lowers that we don't even know yet. Maybe, maybe it goes to look for those games. Okay. Anyways, so the way it's been done before is Kosti makes you fill out this arduous form. <laughs> you don't have to pay any money to be in the group, <laughs> but he makes you fill out an arduous form just to make sure you're kind of serious about it. And, um, so that's been the process, and the um, I think you also have to be invited into the warrior group, and that is mostly be, having filled out the form, and I think maybe a little bit of validation about your rating, though, because you can chime in on that. Um, yeah, so the groups aren't necessarily 100% like um, set in stone. There are kind of some soft rating requirements. So the warrior group is generally considered 1800 plus. Um, and then there's a squire group which is under 1800 somewhere in the range of 15 to 1800 and then there's a grasshopper group which is about under 1500 um, but all these things are very flimsy because everyone has different ratings now so there are some players in the groups that don't even have an over the board rating they're just purely online players um, but they're they clearly know how to calculate and they like to play classical games and so it's like <laughs> essentially you know they're they kind of fit in um so yeah, the problem is that now we're kind of running, we're kind of running low on capacity. This is going to be the issue that we're having in the near future because we don't want the voice chat classes to have more than like, I would say, ten to twelve students because then it just gets like, just too many voices. Uh, and it's probably just boring for the students if they're not really able to talk that much. Um, but. Yeah, we have like very limited instructors and very limited time, and we, especially we have limited time to actually run the classes because the only time I found that kind of works for most people is like weekend mornings because it's the weekend, so people aren't working. It's the morning, so like uh, it's um, 
good for Europeans. And that's basically it. <laughs> it's like, there's no other time. So I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna figure this out, but it's, I think somehow we just need to maybe just do maybe classes at different times that are maybe more, maybe running multiple classes per week and then people can attend at different points. Uh, maybe just having more groups. So I don't know, something to figure out. Yeah, we gotta figure out and um, it's, yeah, it's a whole new world. And like actually one thing that's hilarious about the growing group is Costa did a US chess school with 75 <laughs> plus, Greg Shahada's US chess school with 75 plus kids. And tomorrow night I'm gonna do my first and Greg Shahada's like, oh, it's gonna be easy. And he's <laughs> like, there will only be like 50 some kids in there and I'm 50 some kids. And so, you know, it's a brave new world with that kind of thing. And he's assured me that it's easy. And Costa said it was easy. And I'm like a little bit trembling in my boots about it. Yeah, no, it was pretty smooth because you're on the Zoom call and everyone is muted. They can't unmute themselves or anything. And and they're always, they're just, so you have to kind of keep the lesson interactive because otherwise they'll, they'll probably will get bored. But if you just ask enough questions, like what would you do here? What would you play? Like they just send you messages like, in the private zoom and you don't have to respond to all of them obviously because there's going to be like 50 but you can just kind of get a sense of what kids are saying like this this and this and uh, i i found that it ran very fast and really smoothly oh nm yang was there oh that's cool um i and- do not remember you because there was like 75 kids in there sorry <laughs> <laughs> And one thing, you know, we I kind of put out in the Discord, like, I was like, hey, guys, well, what should we do? How should it work with the groups? And um, no one really responded. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that that offer is still out there. If someone has an idea about how the groups should be run or has an idea that we should be structured, I think we're definitely open to hearing that. Yeah, yeah I would definitely be all ears. Now, I want to say, I've been looking at this F3C5 thing. And I'm with you that E that Bishop E first of all, Bishop E three feels very wrong. Yeah. And E three feels right. And it's funny because okay, one cool rule of thumb that I've got is that whenever pawn structure changes, that's when you have to reevaluate everything. And I feel like what he's doing with Bishop E three is he's following through on notions that he made when F three was played. Right? So he's thinking to himself, oh, I'm going to play knight f4 and do that business. But the problem is, is dark squares are going to get crushed here uh, at the very minimum with cd4 and knight c6, which is exactly what happened. And then black's beautiful, or white's beautiful dark square bishop has real questions. And all of a sudden, black's development isn't looking so bad. Right? Yeah, now that he's getting e5 in, for sure. Right, so this position, knight c6, kind of a big question. And dude played bishop f2. There's, there's questions about what he should do instead of bishop f2 as well. Because here, well, uh, black played e5, but in addition to that, and we played bishop e5 pretty quickly, in addition to e5, there was also mistaken there's d4 as well yeah i was just thinking about d4 now it could get a little bit risky like rook d1 knight b3 e3 well i mean e5 is also risky there's gonna be you know the, there's dreams of white opening up at some point but let's say this it, it looks like at least on the superficial level that black's doing absolutely fine now and this is exactly this was exactly what i I uh, was trying to say earlier with my early experience as a young chess player thinking mistakenly that pawns were people. Pawns aren't people. That knight on h3 is a person. And he's toast. The yeah. bishop on g2 is a person. He's toast. Right. And now all your dreams of pawn whatever are just done. Yeah, this has gone kind of wrong. And I, it's interesting with Quirk, like he's a very violent man. <laughs> he's a very violent man. And, <laughs> and uh, right, this is kind of position where he needs to play some positional moves and you know he was playing against the king's indian and he was doing him a kind of 
thought mistake that Vishnu did months ago, and I think Vishnu's kind of understood it now, that like it evolved from a king's Indian to a Benoni, and a lot of players are thinking like, oh, I'm going to mate black, when really the idea is constricting black with space. Mate might come later, but first you're constricting black, and to that end, you like, you, you, no way you're going to trade any pieces. And that's exactly what we had in that game of trading on G7. And here as well, white was th wasn't thinking about taming black and instead thinking about some pawn structure stuff. And I think he's in big trouble. Like, he needs to find a move now or else he's just terrible. Yeah, it is weird kind of how this, how this happens. Like, because I mean... Of course, you just ask them, like, oh, what's good development? Is it bishops on f2, g2, knight on h3? He'd be like, no, like, this isn't, like, <laughs> this isn't how I, right? But he was trying to do something with f3, and then it's kind of like this inconsistency, like, it just didn't work out. I'm very curious about this bishop e3 move, because, like, it's hard to understand what he missed here or, or misevaluated. Because, I mean, well, even... Like I like I cd5 my, right like i like i like my uh, analysis that i think he was you know has a hang had a hangover about the dreams of the pieces before c5 was played but once c5 was played it's a totally different ballgame totally different and um yeah yeah you i think your e3 move i don't know exactly what's happening but at least in that position the bishop on c8 is still poor the bishop on uh, the pawn on e6 is still loose and we have dreams of, say, knight e3 and then knight e3. Yeah, yeah, we're just keeping, keeping the edge. now, man, oh man, and one maybe practical thing that's going to happen, now, by the way, there might be a better move than this bishop f2 thing. Cd was played, queen d5, and maybe what Quirk 2 is an attacking fiend might have to consider here is going into a bad endgame with queen or queen c4 either. Right. Probably white is okay, but worse. Definitely worse. Definitely worse. Maybe lost because the knight on h3 is so, so terrible. Uh, the other option would be e4, but black has several moves after that too, the simple fe being the simplest. Yeah. I kind of would expect e4 here, though. Well, it's a choice of suffering. <laughs> it's a choice of suffering. Um, and uh, now, black might have some other fancy move. Like, the fancy move would be dreaming about, say, knight d4. I don't know if that works, though. In fact, I don't like it because e d knight c1. That's yeah, still complicated. That's still complicated. Yeah. Knight d4. Yeah. D3. So, uh, so there's e, uh, on e4 you have that, and then the more prosaic fe, where black's definitely going to be better, but it's just a question of how much, right? And uh, well, my intuition would be to take with the knight. And black has several moves, and the point is simply that this is terrible. This is terrible. The bishop's in the way of the rook. Black has a couple good moves in his Yeah, the knight is just, just knight stuck. Knight d4 is actually the big one. Knight d4 looks, yeah, pretty it's interesting too. Threatening stuff, bishop h3 kind of stuff. Yeah. Oof. So, yeah. <laughs> As, I really, I think we gotta give Bubba some credit, man, with c5. Um, yeah, that was definitely, I think, a very good move for him. Oh, I got, a, I got a good question for you, Kostya. This mm -hmm. is a U.S. chess. We're going to test your U.S. chess knowledge. Oh, Are you boy. ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who was Stuart Rachels? I've definitely heard that name. I, wow, I feel like I heard that name yesterday. He was a player. I don't know. I don't know. So Stuart Rachels was a little bit older than me, and... Uh, one thing that I'll, this, he came up in my in my he kind of came back because he just published a memoir 
Mm. Uh, he's a philosophy prophet at the University of Alabama now. And wow. what's kind of bizarre about that is his dad was a prof at the University of Alabama. He wrote like an uh, ethics textbook that got a lot of got a lot of press. And anyways, he was like a prodigy and his dad was big in the chess scene back then, like turned into a, a functionary in US chess. Um, and Stuart Rachel's won, I repeat, won the US championship in nineteen eighty nine. That was like his wow. big claim, and then basically stopped playing. Then he started doing academic stuff, following that amazing. He had a great game against Kudrin. So who was around at that point? Was like Sarawan already? Sarawan was there. Christensen was there. All the all the old Russian guys were there. You know, I mean, it was uh-huh. strong. Term. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, wait. Let me tell the story. So uh, I had. Uh, we were talking about, I think it was maybe it came up for you because I talked a little bit about it on the Roads 2500 show. And, and I wanted to bring it up here because Bubba Tuff is named Sam Hamilton. He was my age. And then when we were um, at the, there was a U.S. Open 1989. You probably weren't even born in 1989. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> and that was uh, in Chicago. And there was a danger going on at the same time. Uh, and so I was really exhausted playing both, and I had an adjourned position against Stuart Rachels. He had, like, gambited a pawn against me or something. And Sam Hamilton analyzed that thing deep into the night. <laughs> well, I slept, and then he tried to help me out, understand what was going on the next day. Oh, wow. So I haven't seen Sam Hamilton since 1989, but, you know, now I see him on the internet. So that's, that's Bubba. That's Bubba Tuff, yeah. Oh, wow, crazy. So after 31 years, the dojo has brought you guys <laughs> back together. That's right, that's right. Uh, wow. I think Haidenoff was there, Joel Benjamin was definitely there. Yeah, for sure Joel Benjamin was there. Uh, Fedorowicz was there, Kudrin was there, Dmitry Gurevich was there. What a story. All right, so we have FE4, FE4 on the board. And FE4 is definitely the move of an angry man because uh, the knight on D2 is not necessarily a great piece. Right. But at least uh, it, it, it's going to force it's going to force black to make a decision with the queen. Well, there's now there's hope here for white because now that the structure is symmetrical. If white just gets the pieces out, knight B3, bishop C5, knight F2, I mean, he'll be fine. Nah. Um. <laughs> no. No. Is that terrible pieces? Um. Okay. Hope. I grant you. <laughs> now, black has an interesting choice here, right? Uh, let's just say there's queen a5 and queen f7. Um, queen a5 though runs into some kind of knight b3, knight c4 stuff. Yeah. Queen b5 is a little weird. So let's say at the very least, uh, Mr. Bubba's going to have to make a judgment here. Let, let, let me try queen f7. This is the first thing that comes to mind. All right, I would play and, bishop c5. Good. I was also thinking bishop e3 might be a move. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The controversy, with, conceivable controversy with bishop c5 is that you're giving my knight the d4 score. Yeah. But okay, let's say I snip, mm-hmm. you snip, and I play queen h5, knight f2. Yeah, let's say that. And I don't know exactly what to do, I'm just going to do that one, knight d4, just because of it. I guess I'm threatening knight e2. Yeah. Uh, well, that's unpleasant. So, maybe bishop e3? Okay. Uh, knight d4 will probably still come, but uh, it won't be quite as brutal. So, maybe, like, let's say queen h5, knight f2, and then knight d4 is a default move, but, um, you know, you could also just play the simple bishop e6, and that also looks pretty 
let's say bishop e6 is, you know, because then you could play rook c8 first and, and then at your leisure land knight d. Yeah, I think black is definitely really comfortable here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm just checked in on Shock Mosteo and Mitch Fabian M. Oh, is it a game over? <laughs> well, it's not officially over, but it looks toast to me. Yeah, it looks absolutely. All right, let's 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 update. <laughs> philosophy prophet. Well, he's a philosophy prof, but, you know, if you're a philosophy uh, prof, you're kind of a prophet as well. <laughs> so we had king d7, bishop e3, bishop takes a2, okay. Check, bishop e6, takes, takes, rook takes, knight c6, alright. And the white to play. Oh, b4. And look at this, Mitch spent eight, uh, eight and a half minutes on a5. So you finally started spending some time. <laughs> well, yeah, when you're desperate, you're going to start thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, now, now Shock Mistail is going to think a little bit himself, too. Uh, well, just take on a5, and there's nothing. I, I, unless I'm missing something, there's nothing going on in this position. The knight continues to be dead. Yeah, he just takes. Um, okay, so if... Knight takes just anything. Rook e5, queen e5. Everything is I, good. I assume, I assume some kind of rook a8 is his intention. The bummer about rook a8 is, you know, then you're giving up all your dreams. Doing maddening stuff on the uh, king side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And white can maybe start pushing. Yeah, I mean, it still needs to be... Next position still needs to be broken down. What would you think about like f4 here? I guess rook f7 is a problem. Honestly, I think we could give black several tempi, and I don't think I don't think there's any hope. Mm. You know, you can do anything here. You can play king g2. You can play probably g5. You well, yeah, you can do anything. He played h4. Holy smokes! <laughs> Wait, h4. What is, <laughs> h4 is at least a cool move. Um. I got a, I got a H4. I'm not getting it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Well, let's maybe the idea is something like Bishop G4, Rook G3, and if you have as we're threatening Rook G4, and if you move the Bishop Rook G7 to trade the Rook, but that's like, get it. H4. Huh. Like, I was like, the guy can do anything, and then he does, he does precisely, it goes crazy with <laughs> um, I assume it's still winning, and we're missing something. Uh, okay, we're missing something because um, dude just played rook a5. Maybe so, he played rook, rook takes a5, really? Wow. Yeah, he played rook takes a5. What, what are we missing after bishop d4? Maybe d4? Right? d4? But it doesn't even work because knight hits g8 at the end. So. I mean, we could have done d4 without h4. I don't know <laughs> why it's any better now. <laughs> um, this is very confusing. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, rook g3 and the bishop goes back or something? I don't know. This looks like. Maybe some dream about pushing the H pawn, like uh, Rook G3 back, and and then Harry runs. That's that's dangerous looking. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. It's, it it feels more complicated than it should be, but it definitely seems dangerous. Yeah. Okay, this this works. Yeah, yeah. I think everything worked, but uh, it was just a little startling. Right. <laughs> and also, rook a5, if, you, you know, if you're black in this position, you'd at least want to think about it, right? You'd be like, oh, well, he at least gave me something to chomp on. <laughs> so he gave me a chomper. Yeah, um, like try to make it work, exactly. 
Maybe he so, was afraid it, of the it, same. Well, he wants some dream, right? Uh, um, rook a1, bishop d5. Yeah. That's his dream. And, um, some rook f7 yeah. stuff. Yeah, you got a dream. There's multiple. Ones. So white played f3. This is funny, such a violent move with g4 and now a, a little tamer move with f3. Right. Um, could have what, what's a little funny about f3 is he could have waited it was you know until bishop d5 came true but i think i think he realizes the pawn is just hanging <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay let me, let me defend this one yeah it's very unpleasant for black i mean the each pawn just runs but okay rook oh, a3 nope. At least, you know, you're trying to um, give the knight on a square on d4. Yeah. And I, I assume his intention is at some point just to start marching with h5. But this f3 move he cut my court, it cut my ability to come over either on h3 or g3. So I wasn't the happiest. Yeah, I feel like this is now getting kind of sharp, no? It's definitely sharper than uh, black wanted or white wanted to be, but this is where uh, shock Mosteo needs to start calculating. Because right, if the knight we've been saying the whole my whole prejudice has been not just the material deficit, but that the knight on c6 has been so terrible. But if we make the pawn on c3 move, of course, then the knight gets to at least have a jaunt. Yeah. Hey, John. Yeah, this is a couple of games from the Warrior Round Robin. Oh, do you, have the, do you have a cross table for us? We do. Let's look at the cross table. Let's switch over now. Got my scenes all set up. Oh, except I didn't, I didn't copy Jesse's video. Yeah, so here we have, which group is this? I think group one, Vishnu's group, where Shach is playing. Yeah, both of these guys are in the group, or all four of these players. Um, so far, it looks like Bubba won one game. Shock won a game. Jeffroy's killing people. And Mitch won a game. And, and Vishnu was going to play uh, Joel tonight, but he decided it was his life had too much chess and he's got a job thing going. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Probably better not to play on under stress. Um, and then the other one, can we pull pull that one up? And also, how come the Squire group, the under the under eighteen hundred, they're not playing tonight? Or um, I guess not. I mean, no one posted anything in mm. in the chat, as far as I saw. Um, but oh, yeah, they... Strong Chess lost a game. Oh Strong yeah, I saw that. Game, I don't. Uh, yeah to raise the curve who's been who's been here quite a bit oh man that was a big victory so that's fun this it's tight i thought you know my worry with strong chess was like oh that guy's gonna just like start tearing it up you know but uh right at least someone took took him out yeah oh man it's exciting so he's not gonna yeah not gonna run away with it um and Henry income's got a lot of games in with that yeah that guy's just been playing like almost every day it's just like, hey, anyone up for classical games? <laughs> <laughs> so that's been cool. Someone mentioned uh, the Patreon, and I wanted to ask you, what is our current situation with the Patreon? Well, so far, it's I mean, it's basically just been just been separate. But I have been thinking about converting it into um, just a chess dojo Patreon, mm -hmm. where if you want to support uh the dojo you would you would just donate through that monthly cool. um so in 
this game, Bubba, Sam Hamilton played Queen B5, and I was prejudiced against that move. And I think I still am. Not that I think he's still better after Queen B5, but now White can go to I think a slightly better version of the end game. Whoa, John! Thanks for the bits, man. Much appreciated. Jeez. Some bits. Yeah. It's a lot. So cool. Actually, this morning, people were being really, really nice in the chat as well. They think this is an underappreciated chess channel. Well, it is, my friend. It <laughs> is. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your video. Nice video. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you guys don't know... Uh, Kosti put out a video on a training plan that uh, a lot of people are watching, and so that's been kind of cool, interesting. You guys can go check that out. Actually, what am I saying? I'll I'll post I'll post a link to that thing. Yeah, we've so we've been getting some cool videos, uh, and slowly I feel in the same way with the Twitch. We're just we just haven't been around that long, so we're right. underappreciated now. <laughs> we'll, we'll come in here. Yeah, thanks again, John. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, um, so cool. But yeah, I was happy with how the video turned out because people always ask, like almost every stream. <laughs> 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 what do I? What do I work on? I have all the books. What do I read? And yeah, just hopefully made it easier for for some folks. Um. Okay, so let's get back to. Here we have the games. Yeah, and Queen got B5. H5. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, w I wanted Queen F7. And now, Quirk is a violent man, but this is his chance to go to the uh, to go to the end game with either Queen B3 or Queen C4. Queen B3 is definitely my intuition, and then. Uh, you have dreams of bishop c5 and knight c5. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Black is still uh, better, but yeah, I don't know. Let's say queen b3, snip, forced, snip. And uh, there, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. I'm sure even a, b might even be some weird idea. But the, I, the notion here is just to get our bishop on f2 moving like bishop c5 and then get our knight on h3 moving like knight f2 <laughs> and yeah. black could win a pawn on e4 but i don't think it's the right well it's it it would at least give us a little bit of counterplay if he went to win because the he would have to give us he'd have to free basically our two bad pieces the bishop on g2 and the knight on h3 to, to win it right but he goes for a4. Because he's a madman. Yeah, kind of <laughs> curious. He's a madman. <laughs> um, uh, very surprising. Yeah, I mean, this endgame looks like white is at least on the way, you know, just surviving. But with a4, I'm not sure exactly what white wants here. Is it just the tempo? I know. Is he playing I, for I'm something? Starting, I think I understand what this guy's psychology is and he, what he wants to do. I think I got it. He's like, it's gonna say that if black plays queen b4 he wants a5 is it good probably not but i i just know that he likes these kinds of ideas and he does not want to go quietly into the dark night <laughs> ah, he's shocked mamad Yarov. this is just mamad Yarov playing <laughs> All the h6 g5s, and now this. That makes sense now. Yeah. I think you're, on, think you're onto something. Um, yeah. Pass fourth. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, pass pawn. Yeah. Um, for the Discord, basically the admin, or we call them the senseis, they have power to make a channel like public or, or private just based on um, if, if everyone should have access to it or not. Oh, yeah. this, the second link did not work. Oh, I know why it didn't work. Sorry about that. I'm going to 
get this for you. Get this beautiful link. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, one cool thing about the YouTube is there's so much, so many ideas that I think all of us have for videos. At least I, I, I feel like I've literally thousands of things that I want to do. Right. And, um, it's, you know, I want to do it well. Like, just for example, these last two training sessions, I just wanted to do, I have this series called What is the Story of the Physician? And I wanted to cover that, but like, Oh, I've got all kinds of other things going on at the same time. Uh, but anyways, they're kind of fun, and it helps me. What I like about doing the videos is it gives me a chance or forces me to ex articulate what I think is going on a couple, just a couple of positions, you know, so it's been a fun process as well. Yeah, I enjoy Queen, those videos quite a bit. Yeah. Queen B4 was played, and now we're going to see what the notion was. You know, the thing about... A4 is you've really um, given black a juicy hold on the B4 square. And after now, the end games aren't quite as cool because I don't even have to take if I don't want to, though I can. Um, yeah. So uh, I assume he's going to do something crazy. He's thinking about it now. You know, one funny thing about attacking players is when things go wrong, they collapse really soon. Yeah. If, if they don't have like a notion of how to play actively, they just start digging themselves a deeper hole. And so, right, he had this chance. Queen B5 really gave the chance to go into the end game. And he still should do it, honestly, I feel. What else, he's, what else he wants to do besides that? Right? Like, yeah. So, I don't know. And Queen D4 was is gonna help the knight d4s of the world be more effective as well. Yeah, I really don't like this move A4. It just doesn't seem to be giving any benefit for white whatsoever. By the way, so what do you think of the group and in terms of like their uh, analysis skills? Like how do you how do you evaluate like where where they're at or do you have a sense of some of their maybe more obvious weaknesses? Um, I've been pretty impressed with the group. Um, I think, the, first of all, the weaknesses you can see here a little bit to do with this new mode of playing. Like, the most obvious is people are moving way too fast. That's the, just the obvious, obvious thing. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, what I've definitely noticed in with the two games I've covered with the black opening, so we had Bubba Tough last week with the winner work. And this week we had Mitch playing the uh, King's Indian, had very, uh, pretty deep opening knowledge, um, and, and not just knowledge, but like kind of some understanding of the position. We're both games black won it, so I was a little bit taken aback when a 2200 plays deep theory. <laughs> I'm always a little shocked. I'm always a little scared. I'm like, oh man, how hard it is it going to be to beat the 2200s if they've got like deep theory. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think the group has been what I have enjoyed most of all, just as the group has been really um, congenial. Like they're just cool and they're not talking over each other. big fights about who's better and yada yada they've just been yeah like i said congenial so that's been a cool thing about it for me so far yeah you know in general i think a lot of chess players they have a lot of respect for um for just like high rated players so if there's like a title player in the room everyone is kind of like on their best behavior <laughs> in a lot of cases um but then that i what's funny is that it scales up like if if a bunch of GMs are hanging out and then like Magnus comes in, then it's like oh, <laughs> like you got to be careful, like <laughs> got to make sure all your suggestions are like checked, you know, carefully. Um, That's interesting, and it, it's almost in, in in that respect, it could be seen like I'm um, less, even less of a teacher, more of a moderator, right? Like me being there, if that's true, is just like um, maybe saying somewhat something insightful once in a while but it's more like oh i'm just providing them the psychological space to be a little bit 
bit slower and thoughtful instead of raging on people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's you know, like true. The internet yeah. can be a very cruel place, and I, I feel like they're generally pretty, pretty cool uh, with each other. Yeah, actually, I've I've even found that in our Discord a little bit. I don't know if it's just the fact that people are typing to each other, but sometimes people will kind of like get snappy with each other, uh -huh. <laughs> just like when they're chatting, and I I think most of it is just like unintentional but then it like it kind of builds into this like weird tension um that doesn't always get resolved right uh but i think that's just an issue with with online communication in in general i think reddit is yeah. the exact same way pretty much um twitter less so because you're often interacting with a real person on Twitter. Not always, but sometimes. Um, so it can be a little bit more polite. Uh, hey, Sunny, I actually did not watch the Magnus Invitational today. Um, I watched the match yesterday between Magnus and Ding, and that was really interesting. Um, but I actually didn't see today's yet. Did you see it, Jesse? Uh, yes and no. I wasn't paying enough attention. And honestly, it's just this weird... Um I don't know if other people feel this way, but like I was very into the candidates' turn. Yeah. Very upset that it stopped. And this thing, uh, if I, honestly, if, yeah, it didn't feel totally real to me. Uh, it probably is, and maybe it's the future, but I, because it wasn't like an actual, actual tournament, it was harder for me to take it quite that seriously. You know, and maybe, and that just might be my problem. <laughs> I think that probably most likely is just my problem. That I no, I think a lot of people are there. I mean, they had like thousands of people watching on Twitch, but right. I feel like I've seen a lot of chess players like on Facebook and Twitter just like, yeah, I didn't really pay attention to this tournament. And I, I'm one of those players, like, I've watched, I haven't seen most of the games, I've watched some of the coverage, and I just want to see like the Magnus Ding match because, okay, that's just like very interesting, but. Yeah, from like a sporting perspective, I'm not super interested. Um, actually, Patient Chess said something interesting uh, in the chat. It says, no body language or tone of voice to help interpret people's intent is part of the issue. So they were talking about the problem with online communication, where it's, yeah, it's different than in-person communication, of course. But I think that also applies to why over the board chess, people can tolerate longer time controls more than they can do it online. Because you can look at your opponent during the game, you can look at other games... When you're playing over the board, you have this kind of container. Obviously, now you're not even allowed to look at your phone during the game. Whereas, when you're playing online, you know no one can really stop you from doing that. Um, and yeah, but when you're playing online, then you have to kind of keep yourself super disciplined. So it's much harder to like really focus on the game. And then when it's not your opponent's turn, it's like it's almost like you have nothing to do sometimes. So I get it. Yeah, people need to adjust to the taking online more seriously. Um, by the way, we've got a really interesting decision from Bubba Tuff here. Like, do you move the king or you just take on uh, b3? Both seem very strong to me. My intuition is king h7, but both seem strong. Um, but while he's thinking, you know, did you... So, let me just say, is I, I don't know how much you took this in, but Danny Wrench did, like, this state of chess.com business. Yeah, I watched that. Mm -hmm. And he had this thing... And I talked to Danny last year about the cheating and their algorithm and stuff. They have really not tried to out people. And now it's getting, the cheating issue is getting so out of hand. Um, where he said, uh, of the title players on chess.com, so people with like FM or whatever it is next to their name, 300 have admitted to cheating. Mm hmm and that number was just stunning to me. 300. That's like a huge number of people. I mean, that does include candidate masters, for one. So okay. it's like, <laughs> it's a broad still, group. <laughs> like those candidate masters, like that's kind of a weird thing that even a lot of people that are so-called candidate masters don't, you know, apply for that title because it's a little bit weird anyway. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And anyway, it's like, the reason I brought it up is like you're, I just imagine you're sitting there, and especially in a long game, and you've got all the temptations of going to your Twitter and your whatever it is, and then if you start believing that other people are cheating, 
then you'll feel entitled to cheat yourself, I guess, you know, how it's going to go down. And uh, I think it's rough now. I think it's really rough. Anyway, so the reason I brought it up is uh, a thing that I can imagine us evolving to, and maybe it would even be cool for our little tournament, is to have a webcam people playing. Mm -hmm. And obviously that seems, you know, a little bit over the top to ask people to do um, when we're just doing our Sunday night at the fights, but I think we're headed to that kind of space, you know, where some kind of something, anyways, one of the interesting things about having a camera on you too would be like, well, you, you might feel more socially uh, inclined not to like look at other stuff on the internet. Right, right. When you're, it's your opponent's move. And I actually made this suggestion on the Discord. Like, if you play a game with a training partner, um, and you guys presumably both want to take it seriously, like, yeah, just set up a Zoom call. Put yourselves on video and on audio, so you can hear each other. So, and and that'll like kind of automatically force you. It'll, it'll kind of make it a more personal experience. Um, but we could totally do what they do for like the the speed chess matches where everyone is just on one zoom call together and we the stream hosts just kind of arrange the videos we can have multiple scenes where we show the players some where we don't um and um yeah we i don't think even sharing screen is is necessary i think we trust these players it would more just be like it would be fun it would be fun to actually look at their faces right now and maybe it would convince mitch to spend more time on his games <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, if mitch. he knew if people were i we're feel bad because um you know literally today on twitter he wrote that i'm like his favorite person on the internet <laughs> <laughs> which I really appreciate. I thought that was great. But yeah, Mitch, you gotta you gotta spend more time on your moves. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, like I said, I think if I play when I imagine doing this myself, I I feel pretty certain that I would have trouble staying really focused in the same way. You know, just let's say I would set up the board here and stuff, and then I would have some screen, and I would need at the very least I would need the screen to make a dinging sound when it was my move. Yeah, it would be really tough. I mean, it's hard enough when you're sitting there uh, at a real game, you know. Yeah. One stream I hope we can figure out that would be awesome is if we could if we could simultaneously have our own physical board here on our sides. And then we have like a board operator who follows whatever we're discussing on our physical boards and making the moves on a digital board. Um, I think that would be really a really good format if we can make that work. So then we would basically get to analyze and like play through games on a physical board, which I enjoy much more than making moves like on on the analysis board. Uh, but then of course people could actually like follow along and see what's happening in the position. Well, I guess I need to make a report about our good friend Shock Mustaio. Things have happened. Hmm? <laughs> Things have happened. Well, I'm assuming he's still winning. But oh, wow, yeah, we gotta go here quickly. We missed, yeah, I forgot about these guys. M. Fabian's got a lot of time to burn. <laughs> he's got a lot of time left. He has some time to figure this out if he needs. <laughs> Alright, I think I can kind of sort of reconstruct how it happened over here. Rook A3. Yeah, I just promoted it. Yeah. Okay. So, right. H5. Rook C3. Fair enough. And, yeah, I assume this was something that Shockmas Day was going to be calculating when we were talking. H6. And then Knight D4 was a thought, but it's a question about what it does. So, B4. Mm -hmm. And now, right, the problem is that the Rook on E3 is... But hokey. So uh, King G two, B three, rookie one. Oh, here we go. This was not as easy as he wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, Rook takes D three. Queen G six. Check. B two. No, knight d3, 
first, excuse me. D8. H7. Knight F1. Rook H1. And then B2. And then that's our current position, I believe. Uh, after Rook H1. Uh, wait, I don't think B2 has been played yet. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. It's just this. Uh, I just was assuming that B2 was at least the main question. So, for example, B2, and if you promote, which is probably a mistake, uh, you got to wonder about Bishop A2 here. Well... <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. There's questions. There's definitely questions, like Queen F5 is the world and stuff. Yeah. But uh, Bishop, that's going to be the main, main question for Mitch. And Mitch has a lot of time, and let's just... Wait a second here. You know? So H8 has not been played. I'm, I'm just going to assume that H8 was a mistake, but there's something better after B2. Now, B2, again, hasn't been played yet. But um, I mean, There's uh, Queen F7. Queen F7. Okay, let's look at that for a second. So imagine queen f7, bishop f7. Oh, yeah, and why wasn't this played earlier? Did white have queen f7 a move ago? There was a lot of things I didn't understand. So, right, this is the position. And if you were going to do queen f7, right, this is when you would do it. <laughs> this is when you would do it. Um... Or maybe he just didn't like it because of some rook d3 or something, maybe, but, yeah. I don't know. Kind of curious why. Yeah, it's hard for me to fall. Well, no, I mean, he, well, I mean, this isn't going to do it, right? Like, queen e5, it's hard to believe you're going to survive that one. Maybe, maybe you are. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I don't know. It all looks super unclear to me. But Rook H1, I just have to say, I'm a little bit... I don't quite get it. Like... <laughs> okay, let's go back a second. Let's just go back. And how did it get weird? So I felt like that, this position, I was... I said, this is totally winning, and I want to stand by that claim. Yeah. Uh, I never felt this, by the way. That was all you, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, you correctly said that this was going to get complicated. Let's imagine that H4 was a genius, and that F3 seemed like... Uh, I If... We're gonna, yeah. I don't like. I didn't like f3. You could play h5 or rook g3 now, and both of those seem much stronger. Like, let's if you wanted to do h4, that would be your plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, that so looks, now, if rook a3, we do have d4, which is nice if we want. But well, we're also just mega faster, and uh, you know, h6. If rook c3, well, we got we got a couple. I mean, I'm assuming g5 even. You know, we've got. <laughs> they say my mama said that the past pawns were a big deal. That's what she said. <laughs> Fine. Okay, g5. Let's say. Let's say b4. Let's push. Okay, you're getting frisky. I see it. <laughs> I see you getting <laughs> frisky. <laughs> we could get multiple queens. We could get multiple queens here. And yours comes with check, unfortunately. That's my book. Oh, okay. It's not as clear as I want it to be. But definitely, this is way more economical than what happens in the game with F3, because F3 was, like, probably unnecessary. 
Yeah, White lost so much time there. I mean, it was yeah. a tough position to play. Rook, Rook I think, H3 but... is a pretty reasonable move. Yeah. Hard to imagine Black's going to live through that. Yeah, so, so F3 like gave up a lot of time because not only was it a tempo itself, but then the Rook was was not cool. You know? So now we're in this weird, very tactical situation. Let's see if they've moved here. Uh, B2 was... Oh my god, what happened? Rook H1. <laughs> and instead of B2, we've got Rook E8, which might be fine. Uh, G5. Oh, it's really hectic now. B2. And Queen E4. And Rook B8. I feel like as punishment, we should make these guys like handwrite the analysis of this game. <laughs> Something like that. And like all of the variations <laughs> that like they could have considered, but didn't. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the most complicated things I've ever seen, and they're playing so fast. I know. Uh. And like, you know, I assume G6, yeah. Knight D6, it's all on the board. Oh my god, it's on the board. Uh, G7 is a thought. <laughs> H8 is a thought. I guess, okay. No, Queen so, A4 Queen check. Queen A4 is a yeah. thought. Queen A4 and then G7. It's hard to imagine. Where it lived. But Knight F5, okay, he wants to do the Knight F5 to us. It's a, it's a 90 plus 30 pass pawn. These players were given 90 minutes and then another 30 seconds per move. So, yeah. There I am. Total animals. <laughs> now it feels like white is very much in control. But we were thinking that just the direct B2, like we never really found a solution here. This one was just very unclear. And to his credit, he spent some time here at Black did, like five minutes on rookie eight. I mean, not enough, but it's a lot for, for him, just relatively speaking. It's a lot for him. <laughs> so, I mean, he... he put in him on a curve or something. Some effort, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's good, but still feels like not enough. Uh, queen A4, is that... Yeah, that's what he did. He did Queen Something A4. Four. Seven, but there's no at this point. So knight f5 is the only shot at some kind of survival skills. True. Knight f5 is king e7 played. Oh, is that true? Yeah, king e7 played. Very quick again. Um. And now, I'm just going to assume that White is going to be able to find something here. He's got a lot of different candidate moves. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely the type of situation where I've gone wrong many times. Like, probably winning position, but there's always tricks. And it's always hard to find that balance. Like, you know, should you just be trying to... Is eliminating counterplay your first thought here, or is it, let me try to look for just a forced win, like promoting a queen? Oh, I definitely think we're going to look for a win. It's already, like, kind of study like. I mean, this is definitely where White should spend 20 minutes to make sure he's got the best of it. And. Even if he decides he doesn't, then he then he can make you know think for twenty minutes, and then if you think you've got nothing, then you can make a draw with Queen H four A four. Right. Um, and the only way this is not going to be a win for White is if this Knight F five is truly devastating. Admit it's a little not totally simple to get out of this. Uh, 
Yeah, it is very annoying. Like we're, I guess we're probably just thinking about like, if h8, then immediately knight f5, and we can't go to the h file because the queen will be hanging. And if we go to g4, then there's rook g2, I guess. And again, we have to go to the h file. Um, so this is kind of the problem White has. And a move like queen a3 is only temporary. Black will just play like king d7 and recreate the threat. Another weird thing about queen a3 is even bishop f5 and you're kind of holding up the pawns. So for example, you get a similar variation with queen h4, king d7. Let's say either queen g5 or f6, knight f5, queen takes, bishop takes. I should be slower. Queen takes f5, bishop takes f5, and the pawns have some grief in promoting. Yeah. Hmm. Also, there's like <laughs> queen a3. I mean, black can promote take, rook takes, and then if white promotes, it's rook g1. <laughs> that's true, yeah. And rook h2. It's like. Queen is so let's rule out queen a3. Yeah, this is bad. Um, man, this is kind of stunning with the knight f5 threat, though. Um. It's this F3 move, it's just killed white. I have to admit, it's getting to that stage of the evening. This, yeah, this is just hard for me. I, I assume there's something here, but it is hard to figure. Um. One bizarre move. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is some. At the very least, then Fabian has got like some problems in his setting. Yeah, no, I, I don't even see like any kind of solution here for White. And let's check in with the Bubba Tough because he did a move I at least I said earlier that I didn't like. A game for frame asking him for a link to the game. I will do both. So here we go. This is going to be Bubba Tough's game. Yeah, so just to recap, um, in this game, we actually think black might be surviving because this threat of knight f5 is just very annoying. Um, and in this game, we're just checking back in with this one where black went for this end game and then went for kind of surprising move. Bishop takes h3, trading off black's best piece for white's worst piece to take a pawn, but kind of freeze white's position, I think. And look what Shark Mistake is doing, he's just going back and forth. <laughs> is he, he repeating? Without, if he takes a draw without thinking 20 minutes, no, oh, come on. He's decided, no. he's like, oh, oh he's it's like, a draw. I can't find it. I I've can't seen everything, it. wow. Oh, look man. at that, the Michael Scott avatar, he's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so funny. Maybe they'll come on the stream, maybe they'll... Yeah, they can come on. I'm gonna message them in the chat. Uh, yeah, while we're getting that set up, I'm gonna try to... I'm gonna reconstruct what happened in Bubba's game. I really don't like what Bubba did. Mold that too. Um... so... Bubba went for the pawn in kind of exactly this, the way I was like, dude, don't do it. So, right on queen b3, he took. I thought king h7 was a little bit more interesting. And then he cashed in to win a pawn. And that is going to give black at the ver or white at the very least, like it's going to fix this terrible knight. Yeah. That's what he did. 
He's going to fix the terrible knight, and now the unopposed light square bishop. Uh, yeah, this is not the way to play chess because uh, before I want to say you were clearly better because of those pieces, and now that you've cashed in, um, well, I don't know you're even better anymore. I, I mean, maybe you are a little bit, but uh, those bishops are amazing. Yeah, I I like white. I mean. If this bishop was on g2, it'd be like, you know, take my pawn, please, to, like, open up the right. diagonal. Now a5, a6 is, like, justifying <laughs> white's advance. The uh, light square bishop is a, is a monster now. Yeah. And even the knight on b3 has some uses of, like, talking to d4 and stuff. Uh, I, I'm going to say that's a classic mistake, because he, yeah, he cashed in with the material, and that's solving all of white's... He thought pawns were people. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys, pawns are people. Pawns they must are have just people. not thought he's like has any kind of serious advantage here and says, "Okay, let me just grab a pawn because maybe it's better than nothing." But yeah, I think should have been just playing like even. I mean, did we talk about? Hmm, no, b6, a5 is really unpleasant, so that doesn't work. M Fabian's in the chat. M Fabian, look, you spe you went so fast, buddy. You went so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so right after queen b3, I thought you could take it. Um, and then there's interesting ideas of b6 and stuff. But also, let's just say you play king h7 or king h8. Uh, the knight on d2 is under pressure. And so if you take on b4, either take from black is good. And uh, yeah beautiful position for for black the knight on h3 terrible bishop on g2 terrible knight on d2 needs work and at some point we're going to play knight b4 right at some point b6 beautiful position by the way i see julian Paleko in the chat shout out to julian oh yeah cool and uh, oh thanks pass pawn for the gifted sub to to shah um so julian these are a couple of round robin tournaments that we set up in the dojo um for uh, uh, at first it was just for like some of the students but um now we have some like outside players as well uh actually at some point i would love to do a some kind of like masters round robin like maybe four four masters that we could find that'd be interested in playing some games and then we would just like just do commentary on that um i think that would be fun but yeah maybe we could quickly go over this game and ask you guys some some questions so we were definitely uh, confused by not the moves actually the moves I thought were pretty logical and decent overall it was just like the speed you know the amount of alternatives that we just raced past <laughs> without <laughs> any <laughs> you know consideration yeah and by the way black made another move which I didn't like uh, in the Bubba game we'll go back we'll go to the Fabian game in a second but he just played rook f1, and now king f1. Now the white king is better. It's going to go to e2. And amazingly, this is a position where all of a sudden there's a... You know, I don't think black's worse, but all of a sudden he's, he needs to be a little careful. He's also actually down on time, where it's starting to get a kind of significant, I think. So, um, yeah, definitely. Well, okay, why don't we around. have... Um, let's see, let's read what M. Fabian wrote. Um, or Mitt. I thought I was lost after that, right? So I just started moving. And so I think what he's talking about is knight a5. Maybe we should, let's go to that knight a5. Yeah. Well, actually, before we do that, first question for Mitch. I think judging based on the timestamp, king h8 was your first kind of real think of the game. Um, so I'm wondering at what point were you were you out of book here? Was it, whoops, was it this moment exactly or... Uh, did you already know this? You're just kind of like remembering or or what? Um, and then after knight g5, f6, oh, knight g3 put you out of book. Okay, that makes sense. So rook f8, c3, king h8. So knight g5, f6, knight 3, e4. Um, bishop b6 was like so, so fast. I mean, yeah. especially given that this is not like... The thematic move in the position. The thematic move would be bishop f8. So I would understand if you played bishop f8 really quickly, because this is usually where the bishop goes to defend the king side, and this is why black often plays rook f8. 
Um, but we felt like bishop b6 was just like lightning speed and very dangerous, obviously, for, for the reasons that that white came up with. Yeah. That was the first... Yeah, and uh, honestly, it, one thing that was interesting about our session today with Mitch was, you know, we had a, a similar position in that I think Mitch believed that he was winning, as he probably thought it was winning here too. I believe in Black's position here. I mean, I could be wrong, but after Bishop F8, I feel like White is doing a dance that he's not entitled to do. Mm. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, I could be. There's obviously some tactics, but after Bishop F8, it definitely feels like uh, White's the one who has to prove something now. Yeah. Um, let's actually look Bishop F8. What I mean, uh, yeah, White's White's got some grief here. Like, there's either what Queen H5, Knight H7, and if you just go back with Knight F3, then we just gotta say Black's got it all. Right. Um, um Smith says, yeah, Bishop F8 makes sense. Hasn't had a position like this come up. Like keeping the bishop on an attacking diagonal. I mean, I guess the bigger point is like, you know, the justification makes sense, but you you really just have to spend some time during the game considering it. Because you might have, you might have seen knight takes h7. Like, okay, you didn't consider it, but you know, like according to the game, it should be six was like was you play this in like ninety seconds. So like, yeah, like if I if I had to spend ninety seconds on the move, I'm not sure I would have considered knight takes h7 either, because it's like just not enough time like you have to you just have to give yourself time to think about the position um one so cool is, thing here yeah. is that this is still a little hot now want... oh we lost you i'm all i'm getting lost oh. i'm getting lost <laughs> um, so queen so g6 is out I still believe in black, but at least here, like this would be the test of white's uh, play, right? Like, well, rather, if, if you don't have something like queen h5 or knight h7, then bishop f8 is just clearly better for black. Um, mm -hmm. So there's h6, which could get scary potentially after knight f7. <clears throat> and of course, there's fg. fg is conceivably frightening in itself. Then maybe g6. It's just winning. I don't actually see a follow for black. Right. Yeah, if we go back a sec, so. So bishop f8. h5 takes. If we take here first, then. Just h6, I guess. Don't play queen g8. <laughs> right, and, and right, and what it shows is the bishop on f8 is a defensive monster. Yeah, it controls all the business. Yeah. Uh, maybe queen h4 after g6. Um. Shockman says, hey, after bishop f8, I might have knight h7 and c4. Let's look at that, because that is the other here. idea. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I, given the way he played, that seems like that was his intention. And then c4. Right, and so the other thing that we were saying in the stream, guys, is that the problem with bishop b6 is not only the knight f6 thing, but he could play c4 there, too, and it seemed like that was totally fine for white as well. Um... Here feels like knight a5 would be a nice way to kind of bail out for black. Um, just to grab the, the light square bishop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, the pawn we gave away on knight on h7 isn't that big of a deal. Right. I guess there's more than one way to do it, but knight a5 looks like a, a good human way of just ending. Okay, I guess this is logical then, because yeah, it would be pretty surprising if white is just winning in this position. Because like, what did black... black hasn't really done anything wrong. It would just be... 
Yeah, it'd be kind of shocking, actually. Um, I'll tell you what is shocking: that uh, Shock Mustaio didn't win that position. <laughs> that <was> shocking. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, okay, let's go there. So, the, yeah, next question for for shock, like um queen h5 check, king g8. Uh you took here. You took. You played bishop h6, knight a5. And then you spent a lot of time after knight a5 to play rook e4. Um so what how deep did you calculate this one? Like when you when you play knight takes h7, what position were you were you anticipating? Bishop H six came very fast, yeah. So I think it was like a sixteen minute think on this one, which is good. That's a great amount of time for such a big uh, decision. Um, but I think we both felt you should have spent time here, and also here. Even if Bishop H six was your initial idea, I mean. Just the fact that you have the position in front of you, you know, you can consider other options here, of which there are many. <laughs> Rook e4, bishop d5, queen g6 check. Um, so it definitely wasn't obvious to us that bishop h6 was the best move. It, it I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it might have been a great move. It just was so fast that I was like, whoa, yeah. We're down two pieces. <laughs> We're down two pieces here. <laughs> well, well, let's put this on the board because one thing that... Uh, Mitch said earlier the way he thought knight a5 was a mistake. I, I want to say I did not see anything clear for black to get out of this map. Now, maybe I missed something, but that was just my sense here. Right? That I didn't, yeah, I didn't see a way out. Uh, yeah, no, neither did I. I think, I think it is bad. Um, maybe there are better tries. Yeah, I was thinking about rook e7. It sounds like Mitch also wanted to play this one. All right, yeah, let's try rook e7. Well, now, but Baron... Okay, we have rook e7. And since I'm down two pieces, c4 is no longer such a big deal. <laughs> I can play, I assume, knight a5 then. <laughs> um, so let's play the obvious, rook e4. Well, yeah, this is where... <laughs> this is where I think black is just stuck. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that you do this one. Yeah, I don't see it. Um, I'm assuming, like, for example, if f5, if nothing else, we've got bishop d5, queen g6 first is obviously. Um, yeah. So, right, I did, we didn't see it. I mean, we didn't, you know, we're not playing the game, so we haven't analyzed it you know, in terms of calculation too much, but just. So I don't know if knight oh. a5 um, was the end. If rook e7, rook e4, king h8... I feel like there's a mate here. Yeah. Uh, let's start with rook h4, right? I mean, there's other moves. Rook g4 is probably also good. G4 is nice. I really want to make Bishop G7 work, but I don't think it does. Rook G4 looks very clean. There's, I guess there's dreams of Queen takes. I don't know about those dreams, but you, know, you got the dreams of playing Queen takes G4 or something like that. Yeah, I could also take here first and then go like Rook H4. Right, they're both those. Oh, there's a lot of moves here that look good. Um, though, I guess we have to say, it is true that knight a5 makes things what I thought was easy after... We had a debate, by the way, Mitch, is that I felt that rook g4, uh, in the game, the position we got, that that was cleanly winning for white. And, and to his credit, Costa said, nope, it's not going to be it that easy. And it turned out it wasn't that easy. But well, I, I just know, know, like, from my experience, like, I have trouble winning this kind of position. So I just feel like at this level, <laughs> it's it's hard, you know? Um, but I definitely felt like objectively it should be good. And, and Bishop d5, I thought, was... a 
good positional move, leaving the knight out to dry. It, I'm, I think you could have done it the other way too, but this was fine. And um, I guess we can go to the moment where we felt like white was probably winning. Um, I guess the main move we didn't like here was... I mean, the main thing we didn't like was just how quickly you guys were playing, because even if your moves are objectively good, again, like you need to consider more options, and you will overlook stuff from time to time that you wouldn't have if you just spent some more time here. But the main move I think we had issue with for white was... Um, actually, maybe... maybe That's a lot of move, actually. Now that it, I'm looking it, at it. I, actually, I want to say here, after bishop a2, this position is completely lost. The bishop on a2 is out. The knight on a5 is out. You've got multiple great moves here. And, uh, Taking on b6 also makes a lot of sense. B6 looks yeah. great. You know, there's other and yeah, there's a lot of drama here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got a lot of good moves here. Taking on b6 and d4 or something, and just trying to pop him open. He doesn't have anything going. Yeah, this is completely toast. Yeah. So, right, it was too fast and a little pong, pong grabby. But even this, totally winning. Totally winning. And uh, then h4 was interesting also because it was played so fast. It probably, I think h4 was a good move. It kind of shocked me. But I think it was ultimately a good move. Yeah. Um, Black played this very quickly. And then f3 was definitely a move I didn't like. Oh, he just forgot g4. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you called that. You said you forgot. Well, yeah. When you're playing so fast, you're gonna forget something. And what about Mitch? Did did you also miss G4's hanging, or did you just think that White had something there? After F3, he started to slow down. Oh, double and miss! That, wow. You, you know what's interesting, actually, about F3 is it's a very awkward move. Um, and it's the move you play when you're like really upset at yourself that you missed the G4 was hanging. <laughs> right, let me just defend this now. Right, and then after F3, the rook is getting really awkward. <laughs> yeah, and the, the basic variation we came up with for white was H5 and just keep pushing <clears throat> because bishop G4 really isn't that impressive. <clears throat> and the rook is, it's so important to have the rook have the ability to go to both of these squares <clears throat> and also like to uh, not give black the time to get the knight in like one of the reasons the entire game i thought black was toast was that the knight doesn't have any good squares yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. definitely seemed like this was the the maybe the biggest miss white had in in this end game because now after f3 now yeah you can't defend c pawn uh, I don't think we ever found like a concrete win. I mean, you weren't like trying super hard, but. And what was really stunning was just that you guys played this sequence so fast because this is like, I don't, I, I would call this like end game study territory. This is very complicated yeah. for even a super GM, and you guys were blitzing it. Right. Yeah. Um. And you know. Rook takes d3 isn't forced either. There's all kinds of moves black can play there. Right. It's not clear if Rook takes d3. I don't <laughs> even know if it helps your position all that much. Yeah. But okay, I mean, we'll we'll cut you some slack. We talked a lot about how difficult it is to focus in online games. And we're right. all just kind of getting used to it. So, it like, I, I think you guys would play slower if it was an over-the-board like tournament game. Like where your rating is on the line and everything. Um, so it's kind of the format as well. Totally agree. Yeah, it's like, and anybody who's played over the board chess process of getting used to it, and I assume like it would be the same for me. It'd take a while for me to get used to playing this newfangled way. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I also feel like the embarrassment of blundering over the board is more of a motivation to slow down versus online. You don't really get that. That hurt. Oh, I don't know. This was m way more people were watching their games than the normal tournament. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but at least your your opponent doesn't have to like see your face. Yeah. <laughs> well, should we check in on Bubba Tough? Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. By the way, hey Tommy, good to see you. The Trust, trust Dojo is all about self-improvement. So, I mean, there can be violence in the classes and we do teach how to be tactically violent. But yeah, for the most part, you know, we're trying to like improve ourselves and not, not necessarily so concerned with winning. But that is a consequence of self-improvement. So definitely uh, comes hand in hand. Um, so Mitch, if you're still listening, uh, I think for you, what I would suggest, because you're clearly like really well prepared in the opening and that's going to be really useful in your games, especially with black, when you're just like comfortably like equalizing and getting a good position. Um, but I think you have to set some kind of hard rule for yourself. Like the next time you're out of book, meaning your opponent plays a move and is like, okay, I don't know the, my next move. You have to just set like a hard limit, like 10 minutes you're just gonna spend on that position, just thinking. Even if you like know what the most obvious thematic move is, just develop that habit to like spend that time exactly the first move out of prep. Or even if you're not even sure if you're in prep or not, if you're kind of confused, spend 10 minutes, think about the position, try to understand what's going on. Like it's gonna help you in the middle game. It'll prevent you from making kind of somewhat like casual, careless moves. And I think it's just, especially for well-prepared players, because sometimes like you have a position that the engine tells you like, okay, you're doing well here. Then your opponent plays some weak move. The engine is gonna see Im immediately like tactically why that move is bad, but you're of, co of course not going to. So you need to spend that time there. You might have like a tactical way of exploiting the opponent's last move. You might just have a way to get a comfortable position. Um, we definitely don't want to be over ambitious, especially with black. Because sometimes, you know, white makes a semi weird move and the intent there is to try to just like punish it and crush it. But a lot of times you have to be a little bit more measured. But just spending that time there, I think, is going to be more helpful for you than, than not, of course. So, yeah, let's go to. Let's go to Bubba. Yeah, with Bubba here, I'm assuming like uh, well, Quirk has got the time advantage, and this is our position, and just intuitively, let's say as compensation, White has the better king. He's got the the beautiful unopposed light square bishop, and he's got the move, which isn't unimportant. And so the natural move, let me just put it on the board, would be Rook C1, and Black needs some good play after rook c1. Knight c5 is another move he can think about in addition to rook c1. Is there a reason he can't play a5? Because I think that's the move. If we go back a move, you know, he took on f1 with the king. Right. He could have taken with the rook as well. Um... a5 is totally a thought, and I was looking at this, and the only reason I was a little hesitant was I wasn't sure what was going to happen after knight d5. There's questions about this though with Bishop E6, King F8, Rook F1 maybe. So. Mm, but you, you could also play King H8. You don't have to. Uh, yeah. Ideally though, I don't want to go. Sign. But anyways, that I think A5 is totally a move, and um, I just wasn't certain that we weren't allowing Knight D5. Now we're kind of allowing it anyway with Rook C1. So like Rook C1, Knight D5 is also key move um, and oh Bubba played a move I really well at least intuitively I don't like he played rook b1 rook d1 yeah okay why do I dislike this move so much because the rooks the rook is necessary. the rook and bishop combination is a fantastic thing because the rook can cover the squares that the bishop doesn't. And in a lot of these positions that we could conceivably get, there's going to be a rook and bishop versus rook and knight situation. And now we're not going to get that. Plus, the king is going to lose time if black takes, which I think he should. And then I don't know... Well, right then, I'm far less convinced that black has compensation after, say, king f7. Maybe he has dreams of bishop c8 and yada yada, but, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely thinking white white is trying to equalize here. Yeah. Well, before I I, I wasn't thinking white was trying to equalize. I thought after rook c1, I don't know what's happening. And honestly, that a5 move, I'm you know if I'm playing in a normal game, I think everything's still possible. After rook d1, well, I don't know. I don't. I mean, white still has some compensation for the pawn, no question, but I don't like it anymore. And there's moves, uh, b6 is another move that um, black can consider here. Is black in time to stop, well, I guess with b6, yeah, like a5 and bishop c8, this idea? Maybe this is why he's trying to trade rooks, just to get this, uh, this square. When you say this square, do you mean oh, I mean, c8, uh, c8 yeah. I, I'm assuming he's got some idea like that. But let's say I play b6, just also with the notion of dominating the knight on b3. Um, okay, bishop g2. Okay. I'm just going to play natural moves here, so knight b4. Yeah, e5. And then one of the knights to d5. Not sure. Uh, let's do the aggressive knight. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I a lot better about white's position if the knight on b3 were doing something right yeah yeah i definitely think let's see if, if they moved um yeah this in fact was played i b6. think b6 is, is a nice simple move um i think that is pretty precise right like because if king f7 if white was able to get this in oh yeah knight d5 is still unpleasant yeah black can play dropping. b6 anyway yeah Maybe it goes bishop g2 or something, but I don't know. King e6. Bishop g2, I just play king e6. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. I feel like uh, this, either one is probably good. I like, on principle, I like b6 because we're just saying that the knight on b3 is terrible. Right. I, I definitely think you're right. I think the rook trade was, was a mistake for white. Just, yeah, the, the pieces need the rook to help create counterplay. This rook has to, like, threaten to always come to c7 in some line and cause trouble. But now black... I don't know if black is going to win this one, but black is now probably more comfortable than before. Oh yeah, I mean, you need something ASAP. This is a problem. Baba tough. Yeah, I think that's a real instructive one, the bailout. Uh, let me just stress that moment here. When in this position, after queen b3 check, which clearly I want to say Quirk did not want to do. The man is a violent dude. <laughs> he is a violent dude. He did not, you know, a4 didn't help his position. And here both king h7 and queen b3 followed by like b6 were good for black. But he cashed out and this radically improve the terrible terrible white uh, position of the white miners and it's still probably at least fine for uh, white but then uh, and that I was impressed by that for black this and then that move though rook d1 oh no oh no quirked buddy you're an you're an attacker you need to play moves like a5 or rook c1 dude <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, this looks like bad news. Um, and up enough. Something did wait. Something happened here. I may write his quirks. Um. Yeah, this, this could easily go out. really wrong. Mm -hmm. So Vishes is admitting he wanted to bail too, <laughs> with uh, winning the pot. Um, yeah, rook t1 was a really bad one. Um, the knight on b3, I don't know. I don't 
don't really have any great advice for White here. Well, trade knights and then trade dark squared bishop for knight. Okay, so when you say trade knights, what are you thinking about? Um, maybe I'd try knight d2. Now, I just want to say a violent way to try to trade knights might be to play a5. Yeah, definitely possible, actually. Now, that'll, that'll give white, black a very stable advantage, but at least you get to trade knights. So for, well... Let's, let's put that on the board for a second. So, right, if you play a5, now maybe the computer would want ba, but then there's weird bishop g2 stuff, right? right? So let's just pretend that that's not possible. So knight a5, bishop a7. Now, right, this is just a very stable advantage for black, but you've got, you've got hope. Uh, kind of, sort of hope, you know? I don't know how stable is it. I think it might, might just be like, just bishop b8 and... Just like drawing by force, maybe. Maybe I should stop Bishop B8. I don't know. True. Okay. Let's maybe. Right. So this would be the and then the notion again with A5 is just to get rid of the stupid knight on B3. Yeah. Um, and there is no who should mention there's no knight D5 because of Bishop E6. So snip, snip. Snip and Bishop B eight is our concern. Yeah, maybe um knight d two there, Ryan, in that line with B A Bishop G two E four. Yeah, let me just try this again. King F seven, Bishop B A E four. Yeah, I'll go here. You want to just totally cash me out. It's fair. Yeah, I don't... No. I think I'm saying no. Yeah, simplification just seems to to help white. Um, I kind of think black maybe should look at BA, though. But the knight will live. So, for example, bishop g2. Yeah. And maybe E4. Yeah, E4, knight D2, knight D5, something like this. Might be... Oh, but how yeah, about it... this one? What if, um... Can White just take here? <laughs> Whoa, someone's been doing puzzle rush. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been doing puzzle rush, man. I'm just so uh, used to the engine just being like, just take on e4. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Well, maybe you can. Oh, that's and I think honestly, you could still just play bishop f2 or g1 because there's no e3, and so you're gonna win the pawn. Yeah, that's, you're just doing that's it fair. fancy. Yeah, for sure. Um, so right, a5, and then if we decide that knight a5 gives, and what's funny about that. The sequence too is it's showing that the main advantage of blacks right now is not the extra pawn it's the stupid knight on b3 and so if you have to play ba then you're kind of like you're stretching a little bit to make you know to make glory happen mm. but bishop g2 um looks like we have bishop c8 on the board okay what's what's the i i guess the idea is to come around Bishop B7. Yeah. But what I don't understand is that that is you could have played Bishop G2, and isn't it the same thing? Maybe he wanted to keep Bishop E6. Well, now after King F7, like what are we doing? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, a our uh, bishop b7, knight b4, a5, knight d5. We still have so. Right, it's the same position. Yeah. We could do either or knight. I was never sure which one we should do. Yeah. Maybe he was intimidated by bishop g2, like bishop. Excuse me, by bishop g2 e4, and saying thinking he would get cut, but uh, but we own the light squares in general, so that it shouldn't. 
it shouldn't be getting us cut. <laughs> right? We <laughs> own the light squares. Yeah. Yeah, not sure uh, about this one. Actually, so if, I don't know, well, hopefully Sam will watch this uh, in the replay, and I think the lesson is that pawns aren't people, right? And that's the, well, both for both sides, actually, you know. But, yeah, for sure Sam is being paying attention to pawns here, because a5, I think is, it's, it's getting close. Yeah, you got to be active, because if black just gets a couple moves to consolidate his position, like king f7 knight d5 is the simple threat and uh yeah the knight on b3 doesn't get to move anymore but... yeah once black is like a healthy pawn up and avoiding an opposite color bishop in game i think then it goes from being kind of drawish to like kind of winning and actually let me give another chance for a against a5 that i didn't maybe i should have I paid more attention to so um b6 a5, uh, maybe I should play bishop d8. Hmm. Just to say that I want to hold the b6 square so I dominate the knight. And in some lines, actually, I was noticing earlier I might want to go through e7 just to get my king in. Yeah, this makes sense. So this might be a way to just maintain the domination of the poor knight on b3. Yeah. Yeah, looks looks like black is keeping keeping some pull there. So we have king f7 and bishop b7 on the board. I guess we're expecting knight b4. Nothing else really makes sense. This is a cool comment from Mitch that he's on the leaderboard. Now, this is a whole part of the, the uh, chessable culture that I'm mm -hmm. not even you know familiar with, so it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, if, especially if I was a kid, like, growing up now, that would be kind of a cool thing for me. It'd be like, oh, I want to get on the leaderboard. <laughs> I want to be on the leaderboard. You I know? mean, honestly, Jesse, like, for me, it's exciting, too. So you don't even have to be a kid. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, the, the community is really cool. I mean, they're always, like, on Twitter, they're always supporting each other. Chessable is always, like, interacting and retweeting with people doing the courses. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's kind of, like, on the same team, which is fun. And one thing, you know, I wanted to want to do is, like, you did a cool, you did a couple cool, like, uh, live reaction videos. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of doing a reaction video to me trying out Chessable for the first time. Oh, I thought yeah. That would they actually contacted me to do like some video and stuff and it just hasn't happened um, and I feel like I'm really busy anyway um, and also another person that contacted me I don't know if you heard of Decode Chess I did uh, hear from them yeah oh they contacted you too anyways I thought that would be a cool reaction video you know it's like this AI thing that's trying to mimic human uh, interpretations of positions right which like let's say I did it I think I probably will just to check it out it'd be fun uh, even if I decided it was lame it's still interesting in that it's a technology that I can imagine improving yeah you know, trying to put uh, human words onto weird chess ideas that the computer's going to come up with I like what Josh said I take a reaction video of Jesse reacting to any sort of technology <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'd probably be me dropping f bombs, being like, "Why doesn't this work? <laughs> this is terrible. Why are they doing this to me?" <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. So I haven't checked out Deco Chess much. I feel like I saw like one or two games there, and it looked interesting. But Chessbase was also trying their like automated analysis, like their tactical analysis with the annotations and that one like that one missed the mark a lot you know that would that would just kind of like insert cliched annotation here before like computer move <laughs> it's just like so the kind of annotations it would have is like there's a bishop on g5 bishop takes f6 and then it's like threatening bishop takes e7 because that's what the engine thinks is going to be the next move if black doesn't recapture <laughs> so it's just like extremely silly stuff like this um, so hopefully Deco Chess is a little bit better, but yeah, that would be fun to see, to see what that's like. 
What's uh, yeah? Tell us what are some of the videos you're thinking about just for the future. Uh, I think my next video will be um, how to deal with chest tilt. That's a topic that's that's come up a bit in the Discord, and uh, uh -huh. I, I'm just ready to record it. I, I don't know. I just have to like sum up the energy to do it. Um, and I also want to do a couple games um, where I just want to show some of my older games when I was about like 2000, 2100 and just show like some some bad games that I had, like some bad decisions that I made that I learned from and like just kind of sharing with people what it was like to be a 2000 rated Kostya. Mm. <laughs> uh, 2000 Kostya, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think I, I think I made one or two videos like that on my previous channel that people found instructive because people like seeing mistakes, you know, and I think if the mistake was instructive for me, I imagine tons of people are going to be making the same exact type of mistakes, too. Right. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a two of the things that I had I kind of want to do would be big, believe me, like longer term projects would be like... Uh, the worst beatdowns that I've suffered, like in a meaningful way, like the beat, or the rather, you know, instead of the 60 memorable games, would be like my 60 memorable beatdowns. It would be more like maybe 10 memorable beatdowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that would be, you know, a lot of these videos I'm doing, like they're instructive for me as well, you know, so that would be the dream of doing something like that. Yeah, I think that should um, be a joint series that we do, because I definitely have games where right. I just got killed. I think too another one is people talk a lot about best games of all time and that's interesting but uh, something I want to do that I'm into just for myself as well would be like well I want to look at the games that really that, that changed me like after the game I, I come back and I'm like kind of thinking about it and I'm like oh right this like chess is a different game than I thought it was right Mm -hmm. and you're like some concept and you're like oh man <laughs> this is, I, I thought chess was this and no it's that it's something else something yeah. else is going on that sounds great I, be, I did a video I think it was similar to that it was called um, like top five games that changed my life and uh -huh. it was just like five games I remember going through at the time that were like very I, I, I don't want to say just instructive but they yeah just like changed the how I think about the game and like how I thought the game worked. I think there was like two Shirov games on there. <laughs> so this is a what a video you already did? Mm hmm. Oh, okay, cool. But I I don't, I want to continue it because I I think there could be a part two and a part part three to that series. Um, one game that was on there was um. Lautier versus Shirov in the King's Indian. If you remember that one with like the double exchange sacrifice. Hmm. Um, and then it turns into like a full rook sacrifice, and then he just just wins this brilliant game. Um, there was another couple of games, but um, yeah, I think people like seeing the stuff that is like personally uh, useful for you. Right, Vishes wants sheer off and. You know, it's funny, like, Sheriff has all these G4 systems, and, like, dude, Vish, Vishnu loves G4. He'll play <laughs> G4 anytime, anytime he can. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Cheryl's the guy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Now, I want to say this about this game we're watching. Black has consolidated the position in that White's not going to... I don't think White's going to be threatening anything major for a while. But he will always have reasonable drawing chances because of the bishop and the fact that that e pawn needs a lot of work before it can move mm -hmm. um yeah so this is it's still and, and you know at some point white might even throw in a6 just to make black always think about bishop takes b6 as well um and at some point you know, knight d2 is going to come and reorganize its life. So, even though black's better, this there's a lot of drama left here um, for Quirk. And a Quirk that has to be a little bit patient. And I think my sense is here, like, just play bishop f2, and then you kind of throw the position back to white at that point, and 
you know, at some point white has to worry about knight d2 and putting the knight on a light square, whether it's e4 or c4. And once he gets, the, especially like a square like e4, you're not going to move the dude too easily. Right. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Actually, this is actually not going to be, definitely black's better, but that's no, not it's so easy. It is an interesting question for white, whether or not to push a6, because then it's like, it's kind of like a fortress idea. You're just relying on always having the, the threat of bishop b6 to to kind of slow down black. Okay, bishop g1 seems really weird to me. Why, why put it all the way back? Like, aren't you losing flexibility by putting it to g1? And I guess I'm going to say you're losing two rights of flexibility. One, of course, that some boy play bishop e1 and at some point, if I ever get bishop c5 in, in any variety of ways, then you have to trade. So at least, you know, I don't know if it kills him, but it is tr certainly a weird move, right? Yeah, like dynamically it makes sense because you're getting out of the way of like e4, e3, and knight d3. But strategically, yeah, like you pointed out, it, the, the threat of bishop c5 is pretty unpleasant, actually. Now that white, well, white will have to just keep this line on b3. So let me just try to get inside his head. The, the idea is that he's worried. Uh, I don't know what he's worried about. I think he'd be worried about one day like e4, knight d3. Right. The weird thing about e4, at least right now, is that you're enabling uh, knight d4. Yeah, we would pay black to make this move. Yeah, <laughs> we pay him. <laughs> pay him. <laughs> <laughs> like knight d4, knight c6. Like, I think once white trades off the knight, they're they get much closer, unless, like, black is just really in control. Okay, king d6. Which does not feel right to me, king d6. Now, maybe it's got value because of some king c7 idea, but you are encouraging the knight d2s of the world. Yeah, I think he's trying to force white to just trade, trade off this bishop. Well, but a6, there's going to be no trade. Or, or push a6. a6. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, one of the weird things is, let me put that bishop back on g1. So that this is where we're at, right? Bishop g1 and king d6. Um, right. It wasn't... The, the interesting question, I guess, was, well, what did, what did we want him to do? You know? It wasn't entirely easy to figure out what we wanted him to do. Maybe bishop d8 was better. It's a little weird, but bishop d8 would have been a sensible move as well. I didn't like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm king d6 scares me just because the only thing, like I said, that we have going for us is the knight on b3 so bad, and then this is going to enable it. Yeah, so are we saying on knight d2, king c7... We're going a6. And by the way, the other thing we should... Um, I don't know, I was about to mention that on uh, knight d2, maybe you have to think about... Um, think about ba, but let's just pretend that doesn't... That's not a thing. And right, we play a6. Yeah, see you, Vishnu. Take care. And actually, maybe we punish him for his bishop g1 now. c5. That might be a reasonable move. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the big drawback to b6 is one, or to a6 that if, uh, <laughs> if white just loses the dark squared bishop, I mean, just the pawn is, is, is gone. Right. Okay, so at the very least, king c7 puts some or king d6, threatening king d c7 gets some questions, and white played a move again. I'm not, I'm not sure I get. He played king f3. Yeah, not the first instinct for sure. Oh wait, I should wait. I have to promote this. So uh, he did not play knight d2. He played king f3 right here, and he wants to do counterplay with king e4. Okay, at least at least there's an idea of if king c7. Well, actually, 
see, I was about to say then bishop d5 uh, and then king e4, but the king just comes back to d6. So let's check the obvious move, king c7. And I guess you're playing a6 now. There is a uh, bishop a8 with the, the kind of trick, like king b8, we take on d5. Uh, uh, go king e4. Guess we're gonna find out. King c7 on the board. Yeah. I, mean, I was critical of king f3, but maybe I shouldn't have been so mean to it. At least, um, yeah, it, it's just like as a threat. Um, it makes sense. Yeah, now, like, if the visual was on f2, black would have knight d3 there. And that could be annoying. Yeah, so maybe he had this all, <laughs> all figured out earlier. He just, like, yeah, wanted. Yeah, I don't see how black wins, though, after after bishop a8. Um, Both moves are plausible. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about king c7. Now, the good news for black is if he wants, he can just play knight f6. We're holding our c7 square. We're threatening knight d3. The knight on b3 continues to be terrible. Yeah. That's that's just a nice position, honestly. And if you move the knight on b3, then you're going to worry about uh, bishop c5. Yeah, this is actually... This is weird for white now, because king b8 is coming... A bishop e4 anyway can pull out, but so okay, bishop a8 on the board. I definitely like knight f6. Seems like the only way to really get anywhere. Pretty pretty basic stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, we got we're resolving the group. Yeah, the king is doing now a job. I thought a6 was better but it's it, you know then it's also true you you still have the same similar problems even after knight f6 because you move the knight then bishop c5 and um you can't move the bishop on b7 either yeah a6 just felt very committal all right Kosti, let's do so we're gonna say let's just go back and look at this end game for a second that in this so this rook d1 we're saying was poor at least I'm saying, and b6, and the question is, could I hold this thing anyway? And uh, a5 certainly is like what I want to do. The other move that comes, to the, I mean, you know, the, there's other plans too. I'm realizing is maybe we aim for like penetrating with the king before black does anything. That it looks at least like a question mark that black has to deal with if we play like that. Definitely seems very reasonable. Again, though, knight b4 is probably totally fine. Yeah. Intending knight d4. But something like that would have been better, I feel. And anyways, the interesting question was, like, even though white fuddle buttled it here a little bit, uh, even here, I'm not certain at all that we're in trouble yet. But in a couple moves, we definitely are. Um, for example, a very simple idea here for white would be to say, okay, I'm going to play bishop d2, take on b4 and then we have opposite color bishops and you're never going to penetrate on e4 that's that would be one defensive idea yeah for sure bishop g1 is funny king f3 especially if knight f6 is our resource is that what he did not yet i were waiting on it. but yeah after knight f6 it feels getting it's getting critical and it's because the knight on b3 is so terrible and the king, honestly, the king has gone on a journey he didn't want to go on because now, now you got to worry about knight d3. You got to worry about king b8. I don't know. It just feels like, it just feels like black's position is 
It's just loose with against the two bishops. Like if I were to try AB uh, and knight d2, let's say. All right, let's try it. Knight d2. I want to do bishop. Bishop c5 is at the very least my first instinct. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna have to take that thing. Let's take. And. Yeah, now black gets the grip. Black gets king d6, and everything yeah. is, is fine. I like that word. I get the grip. Yeah. <laughs> like I get, I'm getting the grip. Yeah. Even that position, is, yeah. let, let me give it. Let me just give a. Sh I was gonna give a shout out, but I guess. I'm not. <laughs> Let's give a shout out to that king on d6. <laughs> I was like just saying to myself, well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe you could dream about king e3, and kind of, sort of say that you're holding on. At least you have you still have chances. There's no doubt about it. The fact that you still have some defensive chances. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Even this though is really mucky. Like King E4 now, then King B8, and then there's some real drama. Hmm. If Bishop D5, we have Knight of Six. Yeah. So Bubba is thinking about it. Well, he should think a little bit about it. Um. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't see another candidate besides Knight of Six, really. You might have another one. Hey, Blazing, thanks for the gifted sub to Nabit One. Cool. Nabit, I don't know if it's Nabit One or Nabitone, <laughs> but Nabitone's a cool guy. I know. I, yeah. He's, he's looking to, I think, see, now here's a question Nabitone, Nabitone. is going to play. Nabatoni could be that <laughs> is looking to play. I think he's now in the Squire group, you know. And um, he, uh, like, he maybe he was playing tonight. That was another question. I don't know about the the Squire people. weren't We didn't. So I'm just saying, next Sunday, it would be cool to have a broader, not only more games, but like some of the Squire group playing as well. Yeah, that would be nice for sure. Um, I think. Well, I would really love to get this ladder idea going as well, so that anyone could play uh, and just sign up and and be on the ladder. Um, but I think that will that will take a little bit of time to set up. But that would be really cool to get going, because then there could be ladder games going on uh, all the time. Night of Six was played. By the way, guys, I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. This has been very enjoyable, but. Costa is on West Coast time, and I'm on East Coast time. And uh, whew, I got kids, man. They're terrible people. <laughs> they are truly <laughs> terrible people. So um, I'm probably going to take off pretty soon. But it looks like uh, Bubba Tuff has, has pulled this, has reeled it back in, and at the very least, uh, beautiful chances. A lot of times I feel when I play attacking players, this is the kind of thing, if I'm going to win, this is the kind of position I'm going to end up having to win, right? I stole a pawn from them when they got a little too frisky. And now I have to convert it. Um, and white in the and white also in the end game was too frisky with these moves, bishop g1 and king f3. Right. This looks bad. Guys, it was very pleasant. Any final thoughts, Kosti, before I take off? Uh, no, I think I think we'll be we'll be signing off. I think I'm I'm done for the day as well. Um, Let me make. I'll make a couple make quick some announcements. Plugs. Yeah. You, can, you can make yours. So I got uh, Road to 2500 every Wednesday. I think it's going to be 5 Eastern. We're going to have a schedule. Actually, here's the thing, goes. We need to put that schedule up on the website. Uh, we're going to edit that and put it up. And then um, I'm going to put out some videos hopefully this week. We got the training again on Sunday. Bruce is doing the kids show on Saturday. So loads of content. And... Um, yeah, I'm doing that U.S. chess school thing tomorrow. Holy moly. That's going to be intense. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, those aren't streamed. That would be fun, though. Right. It, essentially, it feels like they're streamed. There's so many kids involved. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, I'll be doing the next episode of the Norm Hunter show with uh, oh, Todd right, Bryant, right, right. Uh, Strong Chess. Um, so that'll be fun. Lately, we've just been doing game analysis, like analyzing some of his games. At some point, I want to also give him some kind of like in-game test and see where uh -huh. his, his theoretical skills are at. Um, but that'll be tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, if you haven't joined the dojo yet, I mean, we're, we're on Discord. And make sure to follow our YouTube channel as well. All of our latest videos. Thanks, Blazon, for the bits. And thanks again, John, for the, the earlier donation. That was really, I mean, that was just amazing. That's going to kick us into high gear. Oh, and Blazon got the uh, the tall emote. And more emotes are coming, guys. I got one in the works. Um, but we have to get to... We have to get to 50 subscribers to get the next one. We're at 45 right now. Um, oh, we're going to have more emotes for for bits and for subs as well. So that's always fun. All right, cool, Kosi. I'll talk to you soon. This, I always enjoy chatting here Sunday night at the fights. It's gonna, It's a tradition. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't wait. Uh, this is going to be fun every week. All right, bye-bye. All right, guys, take care.